This is Take Two. Is Take Two. Cheers. <laughs> I'm finally done being a little bitch. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good, actually. Why, why is that from checking the cameras? Like, what? Is that what you mean, like, from checking the cameras? Mm, me being yeah. a bitch, yeah. I feel like you need to be a little bit hard on yourself in order to. Yeah, and it actually, like, and the shot has to look good, and it's not even about you looking good. If it doesn't look good, people will... Like, if it doesn't look easy to watch, people won't watch it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm always, like, changing things up a notch where it's kind of like, yeah, I just want it to look good and I want it to look better. And I want it to I keep looking better. I thought, wait, were you not, uh, did you not say on our part, did you not above a pub or something like yep. that? Okay, so this that's where the other studio was, is it? It wasn't a studio, it was literally up on top of a pub. So, oh, like, yeah. the way I started it was... Uh, forget like digitally because I think I did like one of them back when I was living in the, uh, on Marlborough Street, which is literally right behind O'Connell Street down yeah. in the basement apartment. Okay. I actually have a photo of that. It's gas, but uh, that's one. And I was like, no, I want to do these face to face. Like I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So I found a studio, which is actually a music studio. Mm. So the guy, bless him, Graham. Uh, we would put everything aside yeah, and we'd, we would be like in a recording studio. And this guy obviously loves music, just rocker dude in his 50s. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm getting paid just to watch people literally talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was like pan pandemic times. How much was that costing me? That was costing me 40 an hour. To use it? To use. Okay. And then obviously with the nature of conversations and setting it up, I think I was paying around like 80 an episode. Okay, yeah. But there was no visuals. And the, re and the issue for that was obviously because it's a music recording studio. Yeah, yeah. So I just had my phone set up on a tripod. Yeah. I would delete all my camera roll and put it up and, yeah. and like record on my iPhone. But the issue with that was iCloud. Sometimes your battery would die. Uh, yeah, like it yeah. would stop recording Jesus. after four minutes, everything, and I couldn't say anything. But the quality actually, uh, weird. I've seen, was that what, so the last ones you were doing, they were... After that, info? no, after that then, I found a pub that okay. that had their venue room go like going away for free. Yeah. So you'd book it. So then I have no idea, like, I'm quite a shy person and I'm quite introverted. Like, yeah. I'm not really like a ballsy person. But weirdly enough, I was like, okay, I have no option. Yeah, I don't have 150 euro an hour for like any other like Dublin based studio. Mm. So it's like, okay, I know they're free. Give them a ring. This was 2021 where we're like done with the pandemic, but like every all businesses just need that little extra boost every time. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, I reached out to them. And I was recording upstairs in a venue room, literally just like creaky floors. Yeah. I would set it up and I had three mini webcams. Oh, wow. And I would record on my iPad. That's mad. So if, if we were to like watch them, you would see me. I had earphones in. Yeah, I'd yeah. have that pod track, like the P4 one on my desk. Yeah. iPad on the ground. So oftentimes I'd go like... Yeah, yeah. To look. Because I would have made so many mistakes. For instance, um, people like knocking the microphone off and the audio would have gone out. And yeah. I would have known, wouldn't have known in that moment. That was a major lesson. Another one, recording. I pressed record twice without knowing. Yeah. So the video was turned off for the entire thing when we started Jesus. the conversation. Yeah. That's literally happened as a lot of times. Like gone whole, like hour, I just didn't record. Like, I mean, you just have to tell the guest. Try and get them to come back. It's awful. Yeah, it's because it's really so it feels fake though. That's why I find hard about it. It's like you want to capture because we don't like prepare our questions same way you do it, just so you can get that real um, conversation. And mm. so then when you do get the guest back and you're asking like all these the same questions last time, it's just like so destroying because like I know the answer to this already. Like and it's not like they're boring or anything. It's just it feels then it becomes like the fake thing of like, why am I asking a question? I know the answer to that. It's is, weird, I don't know. But is there a reason why you would have thought, okay, let's have the same conversation again? Uh, I suppose actually, I think sometimes with, with particular guests, I think someone like your, like someone like yourself who, you know, and a few of our guests who we've had on that, like the conversation could go anywhere. 
um, because maybe you're more used to it or just because maybe by nature as a person you're used to that but um, often we have guests on for a particular reason guests who would be like who would never go on camera but because they have this one thing they can talk about like they are a bit comfortable to come on to talk about that thing so it's not like if you have someone on that's only into hurling it might be hard to convince them to come on to talk about it but you do but then the next time we can't talk to them about philosophy or something so it has to be the same conversation yeah and that's happened a couple of times not that much though i'm getting better at now there's a team yeah there was a stage where i was like we were doing them on zoom and stuff and for a while so the host would be in the room but like the guests would be on the telly or whatever and um i was th- th- that exact equipment like so i was doing the hosting and using the audio and the switching so i was like switching like that and it was mental i felt like because they couldn't fully focus on the conversation but yeah it's good when did you start like this whole journey of okay i want to start having conversations with people and i want to document them yeah um it was in it was in 2019 and we did it for like a couple a few months and uh we did it in a cafe like our first episodes in a local cafe i don't know why what the hell like why what was the reason i don't know i just wanted to do something because i was back living in the town and I don't know, I just wanted to do something weird, I don't know. I, I, I was trying to do something that, like, was really uncomfortable, like, as in, like, doing it in a small town, doing it anywhere is hard, but, like, it was something about doing it in a small town, like, I was trying to break out of these, like, my own barriers and stuff of, like, oh, I'd want to, like, find in a heart to engage publicly because I would have been shy or, like, insecure around, like, uh, other people that grew up in the town, you know, when you're younger and stuff, and it's, like, trying to let go of those things and... And I just, I was kind of frustrated on myself that like every time I walked up town, I was overthinking like, oh, is this person, but I actually thought the way to break out of that was actually just like doing something weird like that, doing something like you should not, in 2019, obviously since like there's been so many podcasts and stuff, but at the time, like we were, there was literally only three video podcasts in the whole of Ireland. So like doing one in Turles, like is like pure, like who do you think you are? Like, you know, in a small town, like it was like, I think it was just a bit of like, kind of like like i don't know like or not i don't know what the word is like um just doing something you're not supposed to do or something is what i felt like and the lads were all the same i think and and it was just fun yeah i don't know why like fully but i think that was a part of it like the amount of times that people have sat in your position and explained to me the concept of Mm. notions and ireland and (laughs) all that kind of stuff (laughs) which yeah is interesting because we have that same thing back home as well yeah yeah. who do you think you are but if I feel like you're the perfect person to answer this question, where like if you were to put that feeling, that discomfort into words, how would you describe it? Of like of me getting notions or of feeling the judgment. Oh yeah, how would you? That's a good question. Of that, your town people. Um, I think I don't know. It's weird because what? How yo? How would you describe that feeling? Is it like? I'm just going through like emotions in my head. It's not like fear. It's not like, I think it's just like this, like, uh, I think it's like you're being watched. I think it's like you're, you're in the spotlight sort of thing or something. I think it's, uh, you're not supposed to stand out. And if you do stand out, like it's, then it's like a weird, like a uh, sort of paradox. Cause you can't do those things. Cause even if you're like someone who doesn't have a crazy, ego and stuff like that just doing anything like other than just going to GEA and like going to your hurling training and going home or for older people just going to mass like anything that just isn't in the direct line of what everyone else is doing like if you do it then you will stand out and if you're standing out well then you are standing out and that means there's more people looking at you and that's just a fact like there will be more people looking at you and I think unless you're fully comfortable with yourself uh like that looking at you won't feel like a nice thing like yeah if you're fully comfortable with yourself like people will love it like but until you're like that people looking at you can't always be a good thing like and if we were to peel the onion a little bit further down right because that's the thing when it comes to societies where the major probably i would say roman catholic societies yeah and correct. the reason why i say that i bring it up quite often and I feel like it's fair to explain the original, uh, the origin to that. Mm. I was watching a Blind Boy live podcast and I forgot yeah. who he brought on. It was down in Galway, American, 
and uh, it was a couple that own a video game company. All oh, right. And he was like, what are you guys doing? Like, what's your background? Da, da, da. And she goes, yeah, like, uh, I'm American. I, I think she was raised in New Jersey. And she goes, but I share the same Roman Catholic shame as you guys. Mm. I was like, ooh, Roman Catholic shame. That's mad, yeah. I feel like everyone in that room just, like, understood that term of... Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's not about the religion, but it's the same shame. yeah. In saying that, though, within each society, then there are those kids mm. that are raised in such a way, sometimes even within the same family, that are like, okay, you are going to be the star mm. and you're going to be the one that, like, listen, you don't want people looking at you. Yeah. And I th do think it comes, like, naturally. Obviously, my experience would be through sport where it's, like, there would be that two or three kids on the team that, like tend to hog the ball and like enjoy scoring goals yeah and yeah natural just yeah look at me yeah. and i will thrive yeah yeah versus like like what were you like as a kid actually uh i definitely always wanted to be that and i felt like i was always like one barrier within myself to be that like and do you to be think honest. that is jealousy or that is i had that, je yeah. jealousy or of other people doing it is it were you do you think you were jealous of those kids because you wanted to be that? Or is it just like a mm, was different jealous? type of feeling? Uh, I would say it was never jealous. Like, um, I definitely always wanted it. It wasn't jealousy that they had it and I didn't. Mm. I think it was definitely like anger. And in fairness, I used to have like teachers and coaches and stuff be like, oh, you could just do this, just do this. And like people like who did believe in me when I was younger that I just like couldn't and I always like felt that I would like even like playing hurling and stuff like there's people like I was definitely way better in my head because I could actually go home and imagine like uh, you know and use even from young age and it's like I use imagining practices now to make things happen and it works now but when I was younger I would like I would like just fantasize just all day in school dreaming about like scoring all these goals and stuff like that or what else or I was going to say like yeah like I'd never dream about getting good results or anything like that but yeah just like scoring goals or but then like and I knew I could but then I got to the match it just like freeze up it was like stage fright or something like that mm. I was still like okay at and stuff but um I I think genuinely like for I was always just more angry at myself for not doing what I know I could like I never actually felt like it wasn't like oh he's doing better than me it's just like I knew I could do better and I knew that for a fact but I didn't so that doesn't mean anything you know I just didn't. So, um, yeah, I could have done better. And and everything in life as well, like not just hurling, it could be an art. Like I tried so many different things and I always felt like, uh, I didn't, yeah, I always felt like I could have been the best at all of them. And then for years I got upset that I was never the best at anything. And I was like, okay, everyone seems to be the best at something. But um, that went away when I realized the thing I was good at was like, uh, uh, I was having a conversation with someone and in this conversation I realized like I was getting so upset that I wasn't the best at hurling or art or, or anything that I was trying. Um, I literally tried every sport at one stage, like rugby, soccer, everything, and always gave it up because I wasn't the best. Um, but I realized though, like the thing I, I was the best at was getting good. Like, at, so like I could get good at everything. So I wasn't the best at one thing, but I was definitely like in my head anyway, I realized like not the best, but I was definitely, my talent was trying things like, and then I was like, oh, and I realized that the, the want to be the best kind of went away and shit like, cause it doesn't actually mean anything really like. Explain the process of getting good at something though. Getting good at something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Cause that's, uh. So like, is it just like, I am talented at figuring things out? Mm. Yeah. Like, it, oh yeah. Like as in. Mm uh picking stuff up like like just, how did you get to the point of this is my thing yeah just oh like yeah well after sport like i wouldn't have even been playing sports anymore it's when like the fact that at some stage like so I, again i was never the best at anything but i was good at soccer good at art and that's it like just the limit of good like uh then getting good at photoshop good at uh video editing like good at like all these things that like like in a sense are diverse like and that like you know because usually people that play hurling don't like art or they don't like you know there's all these worlds that was crossing yeah. so like oh yeah the reason i never wanted i didn't care about being the best anything i was I'm happy just being good because um 
like because I was more proud of myself than like uh, like I said to be more gentle on myself like and like to leave myself alone wanting to be the best at like all these things when it was like why don't I just be very fucking proud of myself that like I can be good at a good loads of things rather than just the best at one thing like and yeah I think that's what getting good was just when I was at a stage where I felt like whether it was hurling that I, I would be a challenge to someone else or whether it's art that like people would say it was good or I don't know like and getting good at it is kind of like vague as well like that could be different to anyone like like to get good if you're already good like I don't know like getting good is like relative isn't it like to the person yeah. of what they see is good because like if you wanted to get good at art like for one person it'd be just to be able to draw something that they seen their friend draw for another person to be good you have to do like van gogh like so i think it's like relative to everyone i don't think it actually there's actually a getting good i don't even know what that means to be honest that's uh, something really interesting and what i've been trying to kind of implement into my life now where it's like the difference between subjective and objective yeah 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 because I feel like for a long time I was really rejecting one or the other. I forgot the fucking definition of them exactly. Mm. But it's like, you know, the tangible one where it's like, this is set in stone. Yeah. I was really ignoring that and leaving it up to the fields all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so I was getting really angry at myself. Not angry, because I feel like that's too extreme of a word, but I was just getting really indifferent on any progress whatsoever yeah because it is not what i imagined myself to be yeah yeah and i like had you, to, when you're indifferent like like you were like kind of in the same way like upset yourself for not being to where you could have been is that yeah what yeah just like any any little progress yeah i wasn't i i was nearly harsh on myself because yeah, yeah. If any, compl not even compliment, but any recognition or any development that came my way, I was just like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Like, like I was being a Debbie Downer, pardon the pun, but like it was <laughs> literally just Actually, like. Even, if, it, if, it, if it was like a, a nihilistic podcast, yeah. right? The world is ending, you could be the Debbie Downer show. In fact, so <laughs> I, on, when starting this out, yeah. I was like, you know, like when you have a few names and all that, I was like, should I just go by Debbie Downer? Yeah, that'd be funny. Like, <laughs> That's kind of funny. I think it would have been really hard to get guests on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, hi, could you come on the Debbie Downer podcast? <laughs> Please, please. it's gonna be positive i swear just disclaimer That's funny. Yeah, that's um, funny. <laughs> i my parents screwed me up so bad with my name honestly Why? Would, would you know so De debbie mm -hmm. debbie okay the b that's what it means my name means b Kieran, debbie yeah is that why they called that after debbie it, they didn't call me that but the okay. name debbie means the b it, okay right yeah okay tell me what i'm allergic to <laughs> no, I, that's bad. <laughs> Have you got stung before? Yeah. <laughs> what happens? Is it bad? Um, uh, fever, throwing up, swelling. <laughs> no way. Just Jeez. pure allergy of that. Like I am a walking, just hypocrite, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I was meant yeah. to change my name, but anyways, now I changed it to Deb, yeah. just for branding purposes. I still go by Debbie. And sh show your second name. My surname. Your surname, yeah. Uh, why and you're from Malta? Yeah. How is that in Malta? What Maltesian? Did I just make something? No, no? not Maltesian. Okay, is that right? <laughs> no. Did I just make it up? <laughs> yes. Okay. It's Maltese. Is that <laughs> okay, Maltese. You're you're the first person to say that. Nice. I've gotten Maltilian. Mm. I'm Maltesian now. Maltese, uh, <laughs> Maltese like the chocolate. <laughs> okay. Um, a Scottish man and a Irish woman mm. couldn't get married because protestant and oh, catholic yeah. so they made their merry way down to malta yeah in the probably i'd say late 1800s yeah yeah and they just had a shit ton of boys so many boys yeah um uh, literally my my dad is one of five boys so i think it would be my great great granddad that would be shot oh wow and then elizabeth haggard if anyone's surname is haggard reach out to me by the way yeah, reach out to me, Irish people. Uh, I have no idea where she's from, but the lad's from Perth. Okay, right. Cool, eh? Yeah, that is cool, actually. Yeah, so they just had a shit ton of boys, and here we are. It's interesting, though, because a lot of people kind of 
imagine Malta being really exotic yet mm. European, but a lot of our names, like the country's kind of split into whether or not you're going to have an English name yeah. or an Italian one. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying that in our podcast, I only found out that the English uh, borrowed your country for a while as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just threw this up, you know, yeah. for a little bit. But interestingly enough, I was explaining that the other day, um, we asked for the English to take over Malta. Oh, yeah. What was we hated the French. Oh, I didn't know that, years. actually. Why did you hate the French? Uh, God knows, you know, I wasn't yeah. around, thankfully. But uh, it was just two years of the French reign. Okay, and, uh, right, yeah. we asked for the English to take over. That's mad. So what do you, how do you, what do you do that? Do you write a letter? Like, would you mind taking us? How does that conversation start? I have, start? No, uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, you know what I also find interesting when it comes to like history? It's yeah. just like who made the executive decision? To do something to, mad to like that. To ask the English. Yeah, that, like that's what I mean. Like that, that is such a bizarre thing. Like, like you can, you can explain like a, uh, a crazy dictator or whoever attacking another country because they want more or whatever it's that simple they just want more or something so they try and take more land but like i can't imagine someone like sitting down a committee like who's going to write the letter to like do you nicely nicely ask them or do you just say do you offend them till mm -hmm. they want to take you over like what's the process like how do you no idea. ask a country to take you over that's so funny i do think there was like something there was a little bit of a battle though because mm. um I am butcher, butchering the history entirely. <laughs> yeah. So I really hope this is not like a conspiracy theory. I yeah, think yeah. it is though. But when the French were going to leave Malta, apparently they were trying to steal all our like art and like yeah. jewels and all that kind of stuff. So the Maltese went about mm. over like in churches and stuff and started painting over the gold in black paint. Yeah. Hence ruining art. Yeah, yeah. So then they didn't take it with them. Yeah. So I, then I remember being a kid and being taken on like school outings and all that, where like yeah. they were kind of like chipping away at the paint and stuff. That's it's quite cool. Why didn't I wonder like now why didn't Irish? Why didn't Michael Collins write a lovely letter to the French, being like, "Could you take us over and study English?" Like, or is it better like, like I'm kind of think like it's just weird how like if that was one thing different in history, like what if France invaded like Ireland eight hundred years ago and it was the French, not the English. I don't know. It's weird, like, how... But then, I don't know, it's strange. And the other thing I was thinking as well is, like, you know you're saying? The Roman thing, which I think is interesting, because uh, I always say it to, like, friends as well. Because, like, in history, you know, like, anger, when we're angry at something, and we do this personally as well, like... Uh, we tend there's a there's a limit to when we, a, we stop asking why. Like, mm. so, like, if someone hurts us, usually if they're close to us, we don't say why, because... On it, it depends, it's different every time, but sometimes we just feel hurt and that's the end of it, you've hurt me. Uh, sometimes if you like, kind of have the unconditional love for that person, you tend to be able to go, uh, why did they hurt me? Like, why are they in the state that they're in to do that? Because you, I don't know, it's weird. There's levels that we ask why. And I feel like, you know, and because I'm the same, like I'm I'm Irish, I would I like our, our, um, our land back too, like every other Irish person. But I always say to other people who are very passionate and angry about it, um, is uh, why? Like, don't just like, I'm angry at the English, like, you know, like stay asking why till you get the answer. Like why, you have to ask like, because yeah, the whole world is angry at the English for colonizing all these places and stuff like that, rightfully so. But I feel like to get change, you need to get to the root of the problem, like to really get back to history, because that's what people's argument is. They stay bringing up the thing about the English so that, um, you know, that they can talk about history so that they could potentially make change. And I think that's true. But that's not the beginning part of history. Like the beginning part of history is back to Rome. Like, like the English were invaded by Rome. Like, you know, it's why did the English do it? Well, they were invaded and they became like a colonized place when really they were like full of like kind of not Celtic people, but Celtic sort of living people, very of the land. Like England used to be very people of the land before uh, Rome sort of conquered it. And all roads lead to Rome is my favorite saying because of that. But then the question, so I can answer that, but then the next question is why did Rome do it? Like why were Rome so, like when the world was living in a place where everyone had their own culture, why, where did this like angry evil just sensation that never existed in the world 
just like rise up in, in, in Italy, in the middle of Italy. I genuinely think the reason for that would be when humans created some form of currency. Yeah. Um, just trade, the concept mm. of rather than just living for yeah. the sake of life. Yeah, yeah. It, it became a currency, whether it is trading salt for sheep mm. and then became gold. I think that's why. Yeah, because it was. Rich, I don't know, Shia, it'd really, be interesting to see, like, is Rome, yeah. like, because it's definitely one of the first places that had, like, metal currencies, because I think trading probably, you but know, is okay. But then I okay, think but... the Vikings were trading with salt and stuff. Yeah. I could be wrong. We'll pull out the old Google. Yeah. We have that now. But... And, the other, and I think the other answer then as well is, like, the Catholic Church in Rome became oh. such a, in the Vatican, like, it did become a thing about m uh, money and power and stuff, and... Like that, the fear of God, I believe, came from Rome. Like from, and like I don't, I haven't studied. Like, really? yeah, I I believe the fear of God, like the singularity, happened in Rome. Like as in, the fear of God being created. Like, because I read the Bible like a lot. Like and, like when you read the original Bible, all it does is talk about love and says nice things. It really does. Like and even the stuff that seems really heavy. When you translate it in a world in a way that wasn't taught to us to translate it from the church or even school in Ireland, um, you translate it in an evil sense, then it seems like this drastic thing that's like uh, doom predicting like book, and it's not like that at all. It's all symbolic, and you know everything symbolic. It's not literal, and um, yeah. But then it was translated. It was manipulated to be. Uh, literal rather than symbolic which led to people being terrified of Christ coming back and people being terrified of, of some place called purgatory or terrified of all these things that was taken by people who realized that they could actually manipulate these words in a lovely book that meant well and just teaching people uh, like how to live and to telling people that you know for example, a lot of the stuff from the way I read it and interpret it, the Bible, isn't that if you do wrong to others, you will go to hell. It's if you do wrong to others, you will feel like you're in hell. And that's a fact. Mm -hmm. If you do wrong for others in your soul, your soul will kind of walk away from you. Or your soul or whatever, if people don't believe that, like your mind, you'll disconnect from who you are. And everyone does that. So people will say, yeah, but what about the people that, you know, are in gangs and murder people and they don't feel remorse? They do, but their soul has stepped away or their minds, they've shut off that part of them that does feel it because they know how painful it is to feel it. So anyway, I do really believe that like all that stuff in the Bible talking about hell is symbolic of uh, how we feel if we did do wrong. It's not saying we go to hell. But then anyway, yeah, the church in Rome realized that they were starting to make money off the fear of God, that if people didn't come to us and say sorry in this box and give us money on their way out, then they would go to an actual place of fire like, and then I really believe it just all went downhill for 2,000 years after that. <laughs> and that's the key thing. You said 2,000 years. Mm. And I think that's what a lot of us are kind of, I'm not going to like, not even diagnose or identify. Yeah, it, yeah. But because we have so little exposure to history nearly. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like we forget the effect, the ripple effect nearly, mm. or the butterfly effect of what yeah. happened 2000 years ago yeah like we're just in 2022 right yeah and yeah. the day i googled it earth is 4.3 billion years old yeah 4.3 or 43 feck and forgot like how old is earth wait well, i just realized why don't we have a birthday for earth every year is that am I, is that a thing yeah like instead we literally like, have new year's day is that yeah but that's like different in every country is there like a day 4.543 billion. That's a big number. I have no idea how the <laughs> fuck they fucking identified that. <laughs> yeah. Just, but but think about it like that, right? Is in us right now, 2000 years time. Yeah. We are still under the impression that like, oh, oh when yeah. we die, yeah. give us maybe like 20 years and the earth will die too. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> like it's not going to happen. Yeah. I think that's why like every generation has the end of the world. Like I think everyone feels the world, like yeah. they're, I, where did I hear that from as well? Because when I was younger, 
like I was 11, like 10 years of age, like going down to my parents being like, like crying, being like, oh, there's this prophecy. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, where are you reading? Like I was reading all these mad, like do like Mayan prophecy books. Like I, I was telling people about 2012 way before the movie and shit when I was like eight, like it was mad. Like, and people were like, what the fuck? I was writing down in my diary, who is God? No way. Yeah. Oh, that's mad. You. That's, that's why I went down the fo- philosophy and who, at route. At the time, who who was God to you? Like, or did you have a? I I didn't have one. Obviously, I was raised um, Christian, like Catholic. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was taught. But I always had that like gut feeling of like universe and stuff. Yeah. Have you read Conversations with God? Yeah, I'm literally got in a charity shop four days ago, and I only started reading it. Yeah. That's mad. It's uh, <laughs> it's a mind blowing. Yeah, book. I am taking yeah. my sweet time with it. That's honestly. funny. Same. Yeah, I only got it, but it's like so good. Yeah. It's so good. It is so fucking good. It's probably one of the most important books. Yeah. I swear to God, if I ever have a kid, that's the first thing that's being dropped. Like yeah, um, charity, yeah. just conversations with God because the way they, it's quite trippy. Mm. But it's just for context. It's this guy chatting to god and then yeah. writing down the answers that get, come to him yeah as if it's god and it's like yeah he's channeling he, he's channeling the conversation so like it is trippy because there's parts where he's like where he's writing his thoughts too and uh he does and he's kind of like is this real he's asking is this real is this really you am i making this up in my head and all this and uh but it's really funny before i came up the reason i resonated with that book a lot i've uh it sounds mad. I have a different, I don't know, it sounds probably mental. I never really said this out loud, but I do, I, like I was doing like these, you know, like the artist way, you ever see that? It's like all these practices anyway, but okay. it's like you do three, eight, four pages every morning, no matter what, first thing you wake up, like just write whatever comes out. And I did it when I first started doing it for months. It was like emotional and stuff that, you know, was buried, like just tears and tears every morning. It was just really? like, yeah, I was living in this like cold, dark house on my own. And it was like most time on my own. And I'd get up at six o'clock every morning, just write three pages, just like all this stuff I didn't know that hurt me from like when I was two, like stupid stuff as well. Well, what would be on paper, stupid stuff, um, was just like tears. And I did it. And after doing that for so long, and I continued to do the pages, other stuff started coming up, like as if like you cleared the channel type of thing or whatever. Like I was starting to get stuff like that and like back and forth between. It wasn't like this is God straight away or anything like that. It was just like, I couldn't write this stuff, like, as in, no one, t- it's not stuff, like, I heard from Alan Watts, it's not stuff I heard in school, it, it's nothing like that, and it's very similar energy to that book, which is weird, and, um, it was just, like, these, like, straight up answers that, as you were, they were coming out, it's like, you know they you know you know it, but also you didn't know it was in you or something, and I do think that about that book, why I think it is, and it even says that in the book, like in a few parts where he, he's just like, why me? And like, he's asking like, uh, God in the book, he's like, why would you pick me? Why? He's like, I didn't pick you. You just, you're the only one listening. Like, and I was like, well, if that's true, like that is true. And I can, I kind of think like, I personally believe that like what it is, is that like, God is like, uh, like our imagination. Like God is the reason we, when we think that's God, when we talk, that could be a person and a vibration thing. But like, how does it make sense? Like, how could it just be this biological, you know, atomy thing? Like, what is the utility in me just speaking? Like, how is it just work? We came from worms and like, why would, you know, like, or, you know, we came from, I do believe like we evolved from other species and stuff. But what I'm saying is I don't think it ends with like, it's all meaningless as in we're just here to evolve because if we were, it just does not make sense that we're having this conversation right now. There's no utility or reason in in Darwin's um, philosophy, like Darwin's thing is, you know, you just you just evolve as a creature and you die and that's it. And I do believe in Darwin stuff, like we evolved and stuff, but I don't believe that that's like it. I think the end of our evolution, like we're no longer going to be stay stay evolving in the body. Now it's starting to evolve in the mind. Oh yeah, yeah, that's where I was going. Yeah, I think the next step or stage is going to be a significant a significantly improved understanding of the brain. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. that's the bit that I think is still undiscovered. Yeah. You know, because yeah. 
where where's your mind yeah wh like where where is it you're is asking it, that yeah. yeah yeah i think it's uh i always use that's why i say like i try not to use like the word soul as much. i think like people when people are talking about mind or soul they're talking about the same thing it's just soul is a more um soul is definitely a harder word to connect to for most people because soul is very like kind of spiritual like and stuff like that it's very like M nearly mystical or magical in its in its context it's usually used and but i think soul is just a kind of i don't i think the soul thinks like i don't think like the physical brain like doesn't think it you know what i mean it's, it doesn't like the physical brain functions like it tells us it sends us signals to move our arm when you tell it to but like what told it to like why would so if i lift up my hand now like what is the reason for my brain to say lift up your hand because it's no evolutionary thing, you know, it's, it's, I am something like is telling it, I am is telling it like, and I think okay. I am is like, uh, is the mind or the soul, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. I, I think it's a, a body thing. Like it's a, I don't know. It's definitely not just a brain thing. And anyway, I think, anyway, I don't know. I, I had a really interesting discussion where we try to deep dive into yeah. the concept of your humanity versus your personhood. Okay. And I think, uh, like, it's quite an interesting discussion because you are your body, yeah. but you also are your soul. Yeah, yeah. And where do we draw the line? In order to like, for I do think, obviously, and I think you'd agree with me, for your soul to be happy, mm. your body needs to be happy too. Definitely, yeah, 100%. I think, there, yeah, that's what I think is like, a lot of like, stuff like people tend to disconnect it as well like we people are either living in two worlds m most time like there are people who are very spirit like so there's people who are very like they don't believe in anything that's fine like we, and they do just and i i like was like that for years actually for a while like um which was just like i think we we're just like this moving body this thing of me that's just like for no reason but so i definitely understand that like when you can't feel something you can't feel it and that's it. Like sometimes, some days I like disconnect to it. It's like a connection thing. But anyway, so like I feel like there are people living in that where it's just like, yeah, it's just like an evolutionary Darwinism thing and stuff. And that's fine. And then I think though, and I, I feel like their thing is very honest because they just, it's which is honest. Cool. And I think it's, it goes down to a, a natural inclination. You yeah. Are either fucked about these questions that we are interested in? Yeah. Or you're not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think, yeah. Because it is, it's like, they're very honest as in they're saying what they see. Mm -hmm. I feel like then there's a lot of stuff, people in the spiritual community who aren't that honest and get too lost in the idea of the soul in terms of the soul is the powerful all and be all like how, and they sort of like disregard their body in a way, like as in, you see this a lot of people misunderstanding like Eastern philosophies where they go, you know, they think monks are shaving their heads because uh, having hair is a bad thing and, you know, it's an ego thing and it's not like that. They're shaving their heads because they want to get deeper into a, a connection with that part of them. It's not because having hair is a, a, a wrong thing or having, because w we all have hair and we all look different for a reason. As souls, I think we all, like, or as a mind or whatever, like, we have to have, like, we have to look different to identify differently so that we can grow. If you went to, like a school and everyone like was bald and everyone like talked the same and everyone taught the same the teacher taught this taught like taught the same thoughts as the students then how could anyone learn it's like we all need to be totally different like yeah. i don't think shaving our heads and just none of us talking to each other is actually the real spiritual thing i think the real spiritual thing is actually being here now is accepting that you're human like going to the shop and it's just like you know being upset sometimes being worried about money i think that's all spiritual too but we see it as like i don't know a lot of people in spiritual thing like like they ignore all that side of being human and they go they kind of look down on it like as if it's not yeah. growth or something uh -huh. uh, i think it's because like the definition of woke has mm. been toyed with both sides of not even yeah. the political spectrum. But yeah, like, I know what uh, you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, be woke, you know, like, all of this is, like, yeah. get out of the matrix and yeah. Bali and learn about <laughs> your chakras and become a breathing teacher. Yeah, versus yeah. Versus then woke on the other hand where it's just, like, yeah, everything is a scam. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're trying to chip your brains and fight. It's funny, yeah. It's t two sides using the same and word. It, it's the same yeah. word. Yeah. And, and that's just, like, where the disagreement starts. But when it... 
I, I appreciate you saying that because I do think Eastern philosophy or Eastern, mm. like the, um, dare I say, like not even untouched, but I think it's a very pure yeah, yeah. Form of teaching yeah. has slowly become westernized. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. And it is unfortunate. I don't think it will lose its roots because if you do want to find it and you do want to learn about it genuinely, yeah. you will. It goes back to, again, Kieran, how am I going to make money from it? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, you know? yeah. And it's like, like, I completely believe in the benefits of for instance meditating yeah nature yeah. um herbs anything that comes from the earth that sort of thing for sure yeah the moment that you fucking turn it into a course yeah yeah or an ebook yeah do you think there's sometimes though and this is the thing this way it's even i don't even like saying it because 99 percent of the there's only outliers there yeah there, there definitely are outliers i feel like people who do the courses and stuff, who mean well. And I think it's okay to, like... Because if you're teaching something good, I think it's okay to be able to pay it from it so that you can teach more. But then the problem is that, like, what you're saying is literally 99.9% of people are, like, probably finding out, like, how do I make money? And it's like someone in a farm is like... They type in Google, how do I make money? And someone in the farm is like, I make money by teaching all these people how to use Facebook or... I don't know, like, anything like that. So... Usually people starting this stuff is like, yeah, the money's definitely first. And that's the, a shame. The money is first. Eh? And that uh, and that's the unfortunate thing. Yeah. And I think the sweet spot in living in this day and age is understanding. And it kind of goes back to like what our conversation down in Turles, where yeah. you get a little bit of that and you get a little bit of this, figure out what works for you. Yeah. As you said, living and walking your own original path and different path yeah where yeah. it's like if you have a headache or if you're crouched down in pain yeah a panadol will help you most likely yeah you know? yeah yeah versus maybe peppermint tea won't in that moment yeah yeah it's very silly and yeah. i'm using like something really no, surface level it's a good way to describe it though but it, it's just like again figuring out that mm. it's some. Um, if, yeah. You know, and like it happened to me, I don't know, um, I wouldn't know if you know this, but it's just so that like we get deeper into this where it's kind of like I would have had a little bit of a weird situation with my asthma where <laughs> it's funny now. It wasn't funny then, but I got addicted to my inhaler. So I was, yeah. uh, so from the age of I had asthma at one. Yeah. By the age of five, I was self-medicating. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So fast forward to the age of 21 then, where mm. I had a pure meltdown because over the years, I would have um, misunderstood anxi mixed anxiety with asthma. No so way. so every bad. time that I was feeling anxious, mm. I was whipping out my inhaler. Thinking you had that. <laughs> Thing um, it was an asthma thing, was it? Like yeah, asthma, right? exactly. That's funny. So the way the doctor yeah. explained it was cocaine to the heart. Yeah, yeah. So That's funny. <laughs> it's gas, really. yeah. But um, the moment that, like, I obviously first went to a doctor, right? Yeah. And I was given all these meds, you know, also to deal with the asthma, which ended up with me like hallucinating and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. When, why wasn't I given the advice of listen? You're going to have these meds. This is what you're going to get. But also, how's your body doing? Yeah, yeah. I had stopped sports because I would have had uh, three surgeries by the three knee surgeries by the age of 19, yeah. 20. So I stopped sports. So fast forward two years, I was feeling the effect of not mm. competing, not moving and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Why wasn't... I fucking kicked in the arse and go like, go on a run, you lazy bastard, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'll, or go out in nature, for instance. Mm. I wasn't dealing well with having a corporate job and being at a desk. Again, a little bit of both. Yeah. That's where, like, the beauty is. Definitely. I think as well, like, the stuff, like, that's a common thing with medicine and with lots of doctors and stuff. Um, is like, the one thing that, like, is common the commonality one commonality between like spirituality and uh science uh and someone like you know in scientific research knows the same thing that someone in 
you know, someone in a gen, someone in a genuine, a genuine person in a in a field of scientific research, and a genuine person in a field of spirituality, both know that nothing is isolated. That like you can't, you have to factor in all the factors if you're doing like a science test. Like you can't like bounce the ball and not take in the table into account. Like you have to take in everything. Like you can't just say the ball is bouncing. The ball does bounce. You have to. Like, why is the ball bouncing? Is it? And you have to find out the temperature of the room and all, all these little things. Like obviously that's a, there's a better example of a, an experiment there. But yeah, there's. I think a good doctor and you do have them is someone who takes into all things into account. The body. It's. It's not like. And that's the problem. It's like, you, oh, you have a mental health doctor and you have a physical doctor. And of course you need that because they can't do everything, but they're not communicating. So if you're seeing a mental health doctor, someone with, about mental health and then doctor about physical health, they're not talking to each other at all. So while this doctor is seeing that, like, like you're having, you know, to say if there's something uh, like in your brain or something like, and it's like an inflammation in your brain. It's like the doctor, he's saying it's because it's a physical thing. It's an inflammation thing. And the mental health doctor is saying it's because, you know, your anxiety and stuff, but really both of them are causing each other. Like the, you know, the inflammation can actually come from intense uh, pressure in the brain and intense pressure in the brain can come from stress. And it's yeah. like, it's like this cycle and none of them are, there's no communication in it. And it's really dangerous in medicine, I think, because that's where the communication is needed the most. Yeah. See it all in one. For sure. Scientific communication is probably something that yeah. um, really, like, there's a massive struggle in it. Yeah. Massive. Because there's still, again, I had a podcast about this that still needs to go out. It will be by this time. Um, but it's like ethics, yeah. scientific communication. But then the issue for that. I feel like such a disappointment, but it is funding. That's the main issue that we identified. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. It, it's kind of like, because people are so different. Yeah. That then when you were to go like, okay, let's get a bunch of men. Yeah. Then let's get a bunch of white men. Mm. Let's get white men in their 20s. Let's get white men in Turles. Yeah. Don't test those people. They're fucked. Are they? They're bad. <laughs> they should be no way to testing people from Turles. It looks fun. When I went down <laughs> there, I saw your place and stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, it's mm. cute. Yeah. I don't know. Tur <laughs> Turles is cute. <laughs> I, I, I saw it like Sorry. really cute and fair. That's right. Um, uh, is there much happening down there? Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> more drugs. and. <laughs> oh, that's the one there's thing that I was violence really for everyone. surprised by when I moved to Ireland. Yeah, drugs. the amount of drugs. Yeah. It scares me. Yeah. Yeah, it is the same in every town as well. It doesn't scare me. It, okay. So it scares me. Cannabis doesn't scare me. Psychedelics do not scare me. Yeah. But it's the hard drugs that do and okay. the lack of control over them. Do you mean scares you like the idea of you because taking them or the idea of um, it's just them existing? The, them existing illegally and especially the hard party drugs because yeah. obviously there is... So there is a drinking culture back home, but for us it's more of a party culture yeah. where it's just like we go out on Saturday nights get sloshed and mm. then regret it with Ireland it's a consistent yeah. one that gets heavier throughout yeah. the weekend and the regret never goes away and the regret never goes away <laughs> yeah. um, hence the mental health issues yeah, that yeah. are like significant over here Yeah, add drugs into it yeah, especially like the heavier ones that Definitely. are on what's the word not even regulated but they're not tested yeah and all that kind of stuff you're asking for tragedy definitely yeah i know like it's and it's worse now than it ever was i like i would have i stopped like like a while back but like it definitely like would have been really heavy into so many different drugs for a long time like since i was like 15 and um which one was your favorite <laughs> that's like a, uh all of them. <laughs> um to be honest i actually was never like like smoke like we i don't smoke weed like and i never really did like and like psychedelics and stuff like that i was never really into um it was like the heart like the opposite it was like the harder drugs and stuff like the party stimulants like and like just being awake for days and stuff, but it's absolutely horrible. And like so many of my friends like are still trapped in it. Like I'm just lucky and I have reasons as well to why I get out of it. And 
would you feel comfortable tapping into those reasons? Yeah, like it's purpose. I put it down to purpose is like it's actually as simple as like 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 people are like that's why I used to get pissed off. Like me and a friend went to like this uh meeting about uh drugs and terrorists before and they were like Oh, it's they were asking us like our opinions. We we're like doing all this community stuff, and Stevie, you met Stevie, oh, yeah. so they asked me and Stevie to go to this thing, and it was like guards there, politicians, and stuff like that, and it was cool. But they were asking like, oh, how did um someone ask like, oh, but you're like all the parents like just so many young people taking drugs because their parents aren't looking out for them, and they've had such hard lives, and they were all abused, and that's definitely true in a lot of cases. But the truth is, and I told them this, like the reality is, is the reason people take drugs, and this is what people need to look at. Stop making it more complex the reason people take drugs is because they're fun now the question is why is there a way is but the thing is they're unhealthy now the question is why do they want fun yeah usually now it gets into well they want to feel things because they did have hard pass and they want to distract their emotions so drugs are just one of the solutions it's not all of the solutions it's not because everyone was traumatized when they were kids like some people are addicted to drugs and they had perfect lives it's because they're fun and people but i noticed that every one of those every person i know i would say they would not be addicted to drugs if they could get off drugs if they had purpose and that's a complex thing though but like purpose is like the reason to get out of bed it's like what people say um like Haley wood who's a doctor who works with a lot of stuff we do like she was talking about like a lot of her work that blew my mind is like everything's always about eating right, sleeping right, and she teaches all this. But like then the question is like everyone's telling you to go to bed on time and everyone's telling you to like eat your vegetables and all this shit. And then like, but why? Like if you have nothing and you don't feel any connection to life, why the fuck would someone care about like eating vegetables or going to sleep on time when they have no reason to? So I think the most important thing, I think the solution to like drugs i think the solution to mental health i think to, to all this stuff is building facilities uh and and it is an abstract thing because purpose is a very abstract thing but it's about like looking at and building more facilities that could uh lead to people finding their purpose or and i definitely don't have the answers but i i know the answer is purpose but like how to give people purpose that's definitely a tricky thing but i think it can be figured out so in grit mm. the book grit the way she defined purpose and the way people uh, should define it yeah. is how can it help others? Yeah. So the moment mm. that you bring others into your definition of purpose, that's mm. where you got it. A lot of people mix up passion with purpose. That's interesting, yeah. And you said... Mm. Yeah, that's true. And what's the reason why I'm bringing it up is because you mentioned mm. facilities. Yeah. And what does facility get to it gets mm. to community yeah yeah and that is where um i think back home anyways i can talk on like malta's behalf mm. but beforehand there used to be a lot of communities from the church yeah. so it, or based on schools for instance so like sports teams that like it was after school you had your community you had basketball yeah after basketball you would have gone to the oratory like silesian oratory or the jesuits or that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff and we're it's getting disconnected from the church, which is a good thing, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. But we're just getting disconnected and getting connected online instead, mm. where we are lacking community there. Yeah, yeah. How definitely. many Discord fucking groups are you going to be in? Yeah, yeah, You just yeah. join them and then you delete the app, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Patreon, you're connecting to one person. You are not joining a bunch of people. Yeah. And that is definitely... De yeah. And I, I definitely agree with that. I think as things get more, I like I I'm like always a person like arguing for online and the power of the internet and its benefits and stuff. So like when I say this, like I'm not someone that's like anti the internet. I'm always no, a person arguing. I its am benefit. in favor of the metaverse. In my what, opinion, yeah. What so what? Why like so? What is that like? The reason why I'm in favor of the metaverse is because there's going to be a piece of technology mm. that will mimic reality. Mm. and will able people to kind of connect mm. physically more yeah. than a comment section more than text yeah that's the only you're fine you it's can okay. it up it's okay um that's the that's the <laughs> have, you, have you worried all day when it was down <laughs> oh, there i love the pink I need this. 
Thanks. Looks good at the the matches the black. Does it? I don't know. I think so. Here, it, IRL, it does in person. IRL. In real life. Yeah. But yeah. Sorry. Um, the metaverse. And so it mimics. Yeah, that's yeah. What. And it's also the one thing that I like about it. Now, obviously, mm. it is not a solid substitute for real life. But the one thing I like about it is that people that would usually struggle, for instance, with social anxiety or people that um, have disabilities or in, mm. uh, that sort of thing, they are able okay. to like That's a cool, access. Okay, I actually it's it's like quite that. ableist. Yeah. It's ableist, but right now, obviously, it is for those that can afford it. Yeah. Therefore, it is... Yeah, I definitely, because I'm, yeah, no, I like that because, yeah, I, I never heard that before. That's a good, like, take on it like that. It's not the solution. Yeah. It the only, the only problem is, right, so it's, a, it's what do you say, what's the word, enable, I'm uh, bad at English. I think it's ableist. Ableist, okay, so, it, it, so it allows people who can't, like, people who are in positions, like, they, they can't experience, like, you know, someone who doesn't have legs can experience like a run and it might be something they always wanted to do. And if the metaverse could mimic a reality where they could feel that and get the pleasures of that, then that's potentially a good thing. Not just that. Like if we were to take it a step back and make it uh, use it like a simpler example, okay, it would be someone that can't afford to go okay. to Kieran Considine's concert. Yeah. Because they would have to travel because they're based in Malta and yeah. can't afford a ticket there. Okay, okay, okay. They are able to experience that digitally. Okay. Or are you talking about them with the headsets? like Them with the headsets. Rather than a concert, let's say a live podcast, okay. so that keep it even simpler. Yeah. Like, it is quite cool in fairness. Yeah. But... You take off the headset and then I have no idea what the feelings are going to be afterwards. Yeah. Because then you have to face your re reality. That's that's the thing though. Like, is that yeah. not like another, is that not like another kind of drug is my only worry with that. Social like, media is a drug. Yeah. Completely. But like, do you know what you were saying? Like people like get, they're getting no substance as it is in Discord and stuff like that. Do you not think like, and it's just question, like is, is the virtual reality, is the metaverse thing just like a, a deep and sort of, a, a, a more realistic like a deeper it's like the illusion of social media but deeper so like that like it's kind of like the difference between uh uh i don't know uh drinking red bull and doing cocaine it's like right just say drinking red bull is just like me going on facebook here right i get hit off that but when i come down after red bull it's kind of like mm. Yeah, I'm like, oh shit, that's bad, and it's hard. You know, you can come yeah. down off all that sugar and caffeine or whatever it is, and you will feel the repercussions of it. It's harder to handle, but it's much harder to handle the repercussions of like cocaine and like you know feeling that come down is way more. I kind of wondering like, what if like coming out, taking off the those weird looking goggles? Hopefully, no one's around when you're in there because they look mad. Like, um, but like, I, I just wonder like taking off them is that shock of coming down off it. Yeah oh, this is my life. Like, so I know it's like all well and good, like where it's like, if you could imagine like, you know, you're on the metaverse and you go to a world where like, there's like, you're in a mansion or whatever, but like, is it like the, I don't know, is it kind of counter evolution? Is it, is it backwards evolution that we're like, we're now we're evolving, like that way is kind of more evolving into not appreciating like what we have. Whereas like, I don't know, I even like a nice place is a nice place. But if I put on glasses now, and I'd appreciate living here if I was, I'd really appreciate living here. But if I put on glasses that brought me to like somewhere else, I would think I was living homeless, you know, 100%, compared to... 100%. 100%. Yeah. I do agree with you. Yeah. But um, I definitely do like what you're saying, though. There is some... It's like everything has positives. And, everything yeah. has positives and yeah. everything has negatives. And what it comes down to is being okay with the presence and i think yeah. that's the yeah. one issue yeah. that has been happening for a very long time and this still happening yeah. right to this instant where it's like let's profit let's make people not okay with what yeah. they have right now and wish for more yeah and that's it. Yeah. It is cocaine versus Red Bull. Yeah. And the goggles will be cocaine. Yeah. I see it as a, rather than cocaine that you would have got off a lad on Snapchat, mm, yeah. you got it at a fancy bar. Okay. 
Okay, that's interesting, yeah. And ideally, in a perfect world, you would have instructions mm. on how to deal with this properly. Yeah. Do I think that that fancy bar will happen? Mm. No. Yeah. I think it will happen after our lifetime or towards mm. the end of it where right now our grandparents are telling us that we're obsessed with our phones yeah. i think we would be even though they are oh they love <laughs> I, their facebook I, yeah I, they love their facebook i am so mad like that like it's oh, i see like i think it's so interesting you ever notice like there's a weird like complete delusion in the world at the moment when people say like young people these days on their phone like the amount of younger people I see, like what they're doing, they're, they're literally in the skate park like we were when we were younger. They're just having fun. They're doing their thing. And then I'm seeing these same people like on their phone who are like like in their late 30s, even even 40s, like who are just giving out about it. And there's nothing wrong with them using the phone either, but you can't like, I think if you could somehow like, I think people would be very surprised by the data if we looked at of a phone usage for like people in their like even like yeah 40s into like uh 20s oh, yeah. like i think yeah, people yeah, would be yeah. shocked by it because like i only when i see people addicted to their phones they're not like they're not 20 like they're no, not they're no, not they're not they're not 20. it's weird i'm not saying they're not addicted but you either, know what they not. say you know yeah. like my favorite thing is not even the phone usage is those things on your head so the moment that you have headphones or earphones on oh yeah they are automatically better than you because they can listen to real life wait say that again so i've been told plenty of times you mean, you mean earphones and earphones stuff? or okay. headphones i've been told plenty of times like if i'm taking oh, yeah. my dog on a walk it's like i've been trying to get your attention but you have those damn things on your head <laughs> like, oh, sorry yeah like i don't want to hear you telling me that i need to walk like give water to my dog my dog's fine she's not thirsty that's so weird <laughs> like, um it has happened so many yeah. times um but, that's strange yeah because i can't respond to you yeah and yeah. because I'm not accessible in that moment in time, then therefore yeah. I am addicted. Uh, although in fairness, I do have, I do think I have a phone problem. Yeah, I do. I I, I really want to work on it, but mm. I can't. And you know, the reason f it's so annoying and it annoys me. I know it might not annoy other people, mm. but it's easier for me to wake up if I go on my phone first. No way. Because the I just kind of like... Like, like it just like wakes me up naturally oh, it's kind of like mad. throwing like espresso on my mouth while i'm still in bed oh, the wow. issue is that if i start my day with my phone then mm. i'm on my phone longer yeah if i start my day without my phone i am sleeping for an extra two hours really mm -hmm. that's mad that's interesting so it just what is it about is it just a stimulus i think it's just it? like a stimulant to that's funny up. that's um, mad I've, I've tried alexa tr <laughs> waking me up with the radio on that's i just mad. go to sleep to taylor swift like i don't care that's mad. <laughs> um so yeah that's basically it when it comes to just like waking up yeah. and social not I, even social media addiction i definitely definitely get that like if i looked at my phone it would stimulate wake me up as well like kind of but I, I'd have like less car. I find that like I'm weird like my my moment like when I'm like real creative or just like uh, balanced in myself the later it gets in the day like the more I feel like I am myself and it's like the same routine every day I wake up I go where am I back in, back in this plan are you living something. on a boat wait what were you living on a boat or like somewhere like on a boat. sea like oh no that's just in Killaloo that's like in the house uh there's loads of boats outside it it looks like it though that's a yeah it's funny I, I I'm I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna definitely get a boat there someday that's my dream like I I keep like every time I go and meditate I just imagine that one of those being on a boat one of, well I imagine that one of those boats move and make room for my one in the future I see I <laughs> that's see. what I imagine what kind of I, I'd love to see you living on a boat I'd love that too my dream is to like because I'm go, like moving into an apartment there or whatever but my dream is to like live in the apartment there but have a boat but not sleep in the apartment just sleep in the apartment or sleep in the boat but then go into the apartment there but I'd love that like I just I yeah, love the nice. feeling of the water oh man I'd love that get a water bed yeah okay that's money <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's the same yeah thing. less insurance all that <laughs> less insurance yeah and all that. are boats pricey in ireland i don't know to be honest uh i never looked into it. i just yeah i don't you know, know you can't live on your boat back home 
probably can't here either. I was, from, I was thinking it's probably I, stuff I like really that. I like. love fucking putting insurance and tax on everything, but oh, yeah, they do, it's yeah. so fucking annoying. Yeah. Literally, if you want to have a f- like fort in public, they will yeah. soon like insure it. that. <laughs> 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 Just like yeah, it is mad. pay that. Do you want a dog? Dog tax. Yeah. TV. That's crazy. Like all the licenses. Yeah. Like having that must be so strange to other countries. Like TV license is yeah. so strange. Oh, but I heard is it in your like in in Lithuania there's countries like that where you need a license for a bicycle. Is that your country? No. They, I think they were trying to introduce like a license for motorized bicycles. Oh, motorized. But I think that was like something that they were talking about. In our- okay. All oh, right. Oh, that's weird. Maybe there is something. I thought like is it like Latvia or a country or Lithuania or one of them that where uh, you need uh, a, like a bike license? Like I didn't know that. It's weird. What is it? It's like a walker's license. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It's weird. They were trying to tax like actual bicycle, bicycle people, like non-motorized bicycles. Oh, that's mad. Yeah, but that was like our all Ireland. All right. That's what I'm going to call this podcast. It's money makes yeah. Ireland and tax. Europe go round. Take tax. That'd Take tax. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It tax my podcast. O'Hara's <laughs> Irish hey, Pale Ale. You have to bleep that out to the pay. Yeah. Don't give them free anything. Don't give anyone anything for free. Sorry, lads. Don't drink. <laughs> yeah, we would not recommend drinking any of this unless they send Debbie an invoice. <laughs> Or no, I'd uh, money. I'd love to be sponsored yeah. by a beer. Yeah, until you pay Debbie, this beer is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you been paid for a podcast episode yet? Uh... Yeah, not Disclose like... Disclose the information. Yeah, like, kind of like, the credit union... The credit union? Yeah. That's the last, pe- like, person or entity really? I thought. It was, credit yeah. Credit union like sponsored a, everything. You Like, they bought, like, yeah, the Craterless Credit Union, like, I'm, using, I'm promoting them on your podcast, they'll have to pay you. <laughs> but, like, they get, uh, paid for, like, a lot of our equipment and stuff. It was really what? sound. And they didn't really expect, like, it's not like a thing where we had to do, you know, at the start of every episode. This episode is sponsored by... Crazy. It really sound like that. And then the Source Arts Centre, who uh, same like sponsored like a lot of money as well for other loads of other equipment. Uh, yeah, there's actually been a few, but they were all very much of the like, we just were supporting this on a local thing. It wasn't like, mm. there was no contract or anything of like, oh, we want you to shout out this or anything like that, which there's other podcasts in Ireland doing that and, or not just Ireland. I mean, that's what happens in podcasts all, but um. I really respected that. We were just lucky that they were people that got the vision. Like, they could tell that, like, like they were very self-aware people that they knew that putting their logo on it would look, like, commercial or something. Mm. You know, I think it works with beers and stuff like that. Because like, they have creative brands. I think, like, it works if, like, you have yeah. stuff like that. But it is a bit tricky. Like, that would have been the fear, like, oh, this becomes a Turles Credit Union podcast. People would start to see it as, like, a kind of weird commercial sort of RTE style ty- sort of thing like yeah yeah charity uh-huh. as well yeah that's a fact um but yeah I don't know we've done there's definitely we there are lots of the shops and different there's a few different brands and stuff that like would and said they would but we're waiting like I actually just don't feel like it's at the level like I I, I think we're gonna wait to like loads of episodes till we like feel like that like they get their money out of it like just in terms of quality yeah and at the moment i used to be saying mad shit like that like i like really just bizarre shit and That's i think what scares me and uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have like come up to me and be like oh have you reached out to anyone yet to like sponsor the podcast yeah. and all that i'm like no yeah no have you seen the shit i say yeah. <laughs> like do you if someone wants to sponsor it i am being stubborn enough in saying that like if they like it, they'll reach out. Yeah, that'll, that'll happen though, like definitely. Because, uh, yeah, I I kind of like the independent route in fairness though. Yeah, I think as well, like you, it's, you put more focus. I actually did get, like, to be honest, I did get into the trap of like, oh yeah, let's go reaching out to all these other places. And I did kind of, but as I was like, do, I like, did up all these proposals and stuff. And it's how we got the credit union money and stuff. And I did up a proposal. And they liked it, but I started like I was going like sending out. I was going to like send it out to every shop in the town and shit like that. But then I was like thinking, as I was doing, it, I caught myself. I was spending more time on like this proposal for money than the actual mm. content of the show. Like, uh, 
Not that and, we put in any. Also, like they will have a say in it. Yeah. And that's the issue that I've noticed from like yeah. working yeah. after graduation. Jesus fucking Christ. Every yeah. business have a, has a stick up their ass when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. It's literally like, oh no, you can't say this. Don't don't say shit or fuck. Yeah, yeah. Or don't question that. Don't say that. And it's like, I don't want. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. I'd rather self-fund than fuck myself over. Def- yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely... Oh, yeah, like, I I definitely sponsored our podcast. I'm so have the lads. <laughs> All of us, like, we've sponsored our podcast. We've put money into it. This, it, like, this episode... Like, money into it. Which camera is on? This episode is sponsored by me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'll add my well, Revolut we're, link. We're, we, like, me and the lads, and, like, the rest, of, we're our biggest sponsor for sure. Like, <laughs> some... There, there is uh, a good podcast is so pricey mm. yeah it's it is and yeah the other thing like i don't know i i think um i don't know yeah, i think i i, I like other thing is so it's like it's not that big yeah i think i think like i'd rather like i really think that i can go somewhere and that's like and then it's really cool that the rest of the people involved do like like at the moment we have which is mad we have like a wait should i am i allowed to say this well, I can I, delete this afterwards. Okay, yeah, right. I'll find out if someone else. Like I'm not sponsored but, by anyone. But, um, so I'm editing it myself. Yeah. <laughs> I know I am allowed to say this actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we're we're an official community group, uh slash it's a social enterprise. Like our, our parent thing, our main thing is called Crohig and that's a social enterprise. And uh so it's like it can it falls in the realm between an actual business but it has like charitable sort of things. It's a social enterprise is where all the profit goes towards the goal. You're looking at yourself over there, aren't you? No, I'm looking up uh, there. Oh, okay. I was okay. Like, I do, like, when, I'm, when I'm trying to think about <laughs> saying, I always like, I don't know. Someone said that to me before. I always like look up and, okay. and I'm thinking. Carry on. And talking to them. <laughs> but um, that would be strange. I wouldn't be able to do that. Just like <laughs> talking to myself. like every so many Yeah, years. for context, if anyone's <laughs> listening, there's a monitor right behind my shoulder. <laughs> no, I was looking up there. I, that would, okay, that's carry terrifying. On. I wouldn't be able to talk, talk to him by like Or look directly yeah. and intensely at the camera. That <laughs> talking you about social enterprise. <laughs> carry I on. love it. Um, but yeah, it's like where all the profit goes towards. Anyway, that's what Crohig is. So the podcast is like a project under that. So we're set up on a scheme now where three people just in the last month are now who are involved. Anyway, like you met Owen and now there's two more since uh, a guy called Adam and then a girl called Jasmine. And three of them are actually getting paid now through this scheme to like do all this. So like I'm not getting it or Stevie's not in that. But it's really good because now I just at the moment I'm working out like this perfect plan to be able to like hand over all this stuff to them and like they love it like they're like you know so then it becomes sort of their project like we just host it and like they're getting paid to just sort of like and is that the artist it. fund that came out uh, recently or it's like a like a, it's sort of like a scheme I don't want to, like, that's the part I don't want to be, yeah, I'll, I don't want, that's, I'll say, I'll tell you exactly after and how it works and stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a, <laughs> the scheme sounds like a dodgy word. <laughs> it's a government scheme. So it's an official one. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but that's, that's, that's class. Like, that's my favorite. Like, that's what I'm really excited about the woman. So then I can, because I do busy with my own work, but then also like, there's other projects that we're doing. So like the goal is that every project we do, like another thing then is like this festival that we did. Like now if we can get a build up a team of that, like and run that. So like we we start these different projects and like 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 some me, Stevie or Hugh or Owen or Haley, like the people and Brendan's or people that are really like close to it, like where the people that start the project and somehow get like other people in to like help mm. it. Cause then it gets so many people in the and town. What kind involved. of festivals are you guys organizing? Uh we did one called we do like loads of different have done loads of different events, but yeah, we did a festival called Tangle Around. It's like a music and art festival. It was the first year this year. It was one day the year coming for the first um from June 1st to June the 5th in 2023, it'll be like a five day thing. Like five days, it'll be two main days, then a third, like good day. And then the other was a kind of like opening parties and stuff like that. But yeah, we're, our goal is to like get this like week long festival in our town like that. Like an arts one. So there's like theater. Um, Yeah, music and art, like just the actual yeah. like, as like a way, way smaller like more like the music festivals, like Body and Soul, like those type of festivals, not like a town. Want to bring like though, and it's nowhere near that size, but that sort of style, but bring it into a town. Do you know the ones that would be in the field, like a picnic and all them? Okay. But like a more family friendly one that's in the town, like, you know, so. So like yeah. family friendly Body and Soul. Yeah. Yeah. In okay. the, and that's in the town, which is handy because you like, 
don't have to build like as many you know, a lot of the infrastructure is there. And, and when you stuff. mean in the town, do you mean you integrate it with like local business? Yeah, different venue. Like we did it this year in our okay. town park. Like we built, mm. there was three, two stages. Like, so there was a main stage and a second sort of spoken word stage. And there was loads of art installations and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and then next year, like we'll do more like in the square, in like the pubs and, you know, like. Would you call that your purpose? My purpose? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't know what my purpose is What's your anymore. Pur- uh, you I, don't know what the more is. The more I found it, the le- uh, more it disappeared. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. Like, I, I found so much things to do, though. I don't know. Like, um, But no, it's a good complaint. No, I don't know. I, I just on my battle with forever still. What, what do you mean? Like, the more you found it, the, le- the more it disappeared? My purpose... Uh, like, do you mean it's evolving? The, so, like, you well, meet it and then it... Yeah, it's kind of like, because the more more I learned like yeah like a few years ago I wanted like I wrote down this goal like I, I wanted a big I, I wrote down this goal in a book I wanted to be the biggest event organizer in the world literally like that big but then as I like I don't know I started to become more f- it just felt like meaningless like as I started to like as the world seemed to start to collapse you know <laughs> with, during the pandemic and like all these wars and stuff I was like why would you want to be the biggest event organizer? It's like the whole world's collapsing. It's like, what sort of meaning is, I just felt so meaningless. Like, it was like, yeah, I'm going to be the biggest, like, why would I want to be the best at anything in a world that's collapsed? So now my purpose is, the world wanna... has collapsed. Yeah, like, <laughs> but if no, if everyone's just trying to be the best, like, uh, and that's what I realized, like, I, I feel like it could be the best, like, even box or anything. I know if I just dedicated my life to anything, I could just do it. But I, I went through on my head, like, w- imagined, I actually did this, like, I imagined what it would be to mo- be the most famous uh, boxer, then, like, the most famous event organizer, the most famous actor. I sat down and imagined all these things. And I imagined him so deeply that, like, I was like, if, like even in the imagine, I was like, this is shit. Like, this is lonely. And it's like, because if you do that, and if I'm doing that, that means everyone else could be doing that. And if everyone's just looking to be the best at this thing that gives you that ego thing or that thing that makes you feel good about yourself, because uh, that's what wanting to be the best, I think, is. Not in all cases. Some people might want to do it to make someone proud or something like that, but... I think in most cases in mine, it was like to be the best to make myself feel better. But I was like, and I could have done that or you can do that. But like, if everyone's doing that and no one's trying to fix the fucking world, like we're all fucked. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's the true and all, but I think yeah, I want to do, I just want to do stuff that has some sort of impact. And I, and when I say I don't have purpose, I think the vague thing is, yeah, I want to change. I want to make change, but um, I just don't, like when I say I don't, like it, that's just, the more I wanted to do that and the more I found out, like, just get what I mean now. It's like the more I knew, the more I started to find my purpose, the more harder it got because my purpose can change in the world. But like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, I don't know yet. Yeah, I think a lot, find of people, out. A, a lot of people focus on being the best this, this, that. Yeah. The <laughs> issue is that then when they do reach it, they're like, well, now what? Yeah, exactly. Versus if you were to like create, and that's where... Uh, goal making yeah. or goal creation comes in where it's like rather than being like I want to be the best podcaster in the world yeah. you go I want to be as healthy as possible for instance yeah yeah and the reason is like you can never get to that therefore you're always working on it yeah yeah so don't if you were to ask me what my goals are I'd be like yeah. I don't fucking know and like, do you feel like you have purpose like a purpose no nah. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Like I, I think because it, it is like what you were saying earlier. Yeah. It's a difference in purpose and passion. There, so. There's a massive difference. I think. Yeah. Um, I do think my purpose might be along the lines of inspiration. Yeah. And I think teaching nearly. Yeah. And I do think that I do have an inclination towards questioning things. Yeah. Quite yeah. A bit. You're definitely, and you're really good at it as well. Like. Um, I feel like this, yeah, can be your purpose, but like in an abstract way of yeah. the purpose is like the effect it has. The effect, I had. that's it. It's like, I want, I, I, that's what I'm trying to figure out is mm. how can I reach people personally Yeah. at a bigger scale where the effect is yeah. a bit more meaningful in my limited like beliefs and that is where it's mm. like. I want people to question things more and not yeah. fear the questions. Because I think a lot of people fear questioning. Yeah. 
Definitely. And uh, yeah, they can't like sit in the why. They can't sit in that. And it's like, yeah. let's fucking keep going. Yeah. Um, And that's where like philosophy, I think, comes in. Yeah. I love the concept of philosophy. And I think... What is philosophy? I don't know. I don't even know how I can define philosophy. Yeah. But I think it's just writing theories down mm. and theorizing the things that can't be yeah and yeah. what where do you find comfort in it so for mm. instance stoicism is something i bring up quite often but it is quite a trend yeah. specifically with men yeah which is interesting my algorithm thinks i am a incel probably <laughs> um <laughs> the amount of are you a man in your 20s yeah and it's like, no. Are you insecure? <laughs> Are you Did a insecure? girl break up with you a few years ago and you Crypto. won't get over it? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, that's why. Yeah, but stoicism funny. is quite interesting and it is quite trendy because it's yeah. just the theory of yeah. you can only control your feelings, but you can't control the things yeah. that are uncontrolled. That is what like stoicism really is. That it's a genuine thing, but the trend yeah. thing isn't even showing what the, real stoicism is. The trend is, is unfortunate and it is creating it is, a few yeah. um, it's a questions. Yeah, yeah, people. yeah, and it is a pure insecure, and I always feel bad. I'm yeah. not saying this is a judgment at all, like, because a lot of those, like, men people talk shit about. I actually see like some of those videos of those guys who are all like talking about, like, you need to be like this, you need, uh, and it's like, well, and I actually genuinely feel bad for them because I know as a guy what the fuck they're actually saying they're crying out for help, like, they're actually like, they're sad, like, about like some breakup, or they're sad about. And and that shit is hard as well. And so like rather than condemning those men as well, I always like feel like like I always have love for them guys as well. Even if they're saying mad shit that I disagree with, I do actually have love for the fact that like they just went through shit, something. I was lucky enough to be strong enough to go through that exact same thing, but like you know, come to a conclusion with it, or whether it's get an answer or become comfortable with myself to come to a conclusion and accept that conclusion. Whereas their thing comes out in like. I'm going to tell guys like that to be a man, you need to do this and like all this stuff that just isn't true as well. Like, and that's what a lot of it is at the moment. I feel like this fake stories and I don't know what you call it. Boism. <laughs> Boism. Yeah. Um, that's a good word. Yeah. I think I appreciate you saying that because I do struggle a little bit with understand. I, mm. I, I, I probably talk about men's mental health more than I do about women's. Really? It's probably because a lot of my guests are male. Yeah. But um, I always struggled to understand why some dudes turn towards those kind of people. Yeah. And I, I, like, I understand the struggle. No, I don't understand the struggle, but I empathize with the struggle of a man. Yeah. Especially right now, I do think if we were to look at social media as a whole. Yeah. Um, a lot of the chit chat is like, you should be sorry for occupying space. I think yeah. a lot of the narrative is if you are a cis straight white man, mm. then your existence is privileged. And I do mm. understand that a lot of men are. Yeah. Um, struggling with that narrative going listen but i do struggle yeah which is completely true therefore yeah. that's why i completely disagree with yeah. the blame and the pointing towards yeah. but you also understand why these guys are then like no but uh, like i don't know what to do with this because i am not yeah. what these people are saying i am not privileged because of all this that has happened personally in my life yeah and then they're looking at these fuck, you know, these influencers yeah, that yeah. are like, yeah, fuck your one over there, yeah. you know, tell her to make you a sandwich. You're yeah. the man in the house yeah, because you're willing to tell a lad yeah, to fuck off. Yeah, like Andrew Tate and all that shit, like all those guys. Yeah, Andrew blowing. Tate's stuff is interesting to me. Yeah. It's interesting to me because you, I can have... I haven't consumed his content, but mm. I have seen a lot of people's takes on it. Yeah. Where they say, I appreciate his thoughts on hard work and all that, but I disagree with a lot of things he says, which yeah. is true. I think the issue with Andrew Tate is he shot himself in the foot mm. because he created a business model where there was a commission 
mm. where if your video went viral, if you yeah. signed up to the feckin Alpha University or whatever it was <laughs> yeah, called, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if your video of his went viral, if you created content for him, if people signed up with yeah, the link yeah. in your bio, it's genius. you got a commission. Yeah. Perfect. Understanding what we were saying before this, understanding mm. the nature of social media and short form content, you can go, I un- uh, there's a formula to virality, which is upsetting people. The more views, the more shares, the more yeah. comments, the more arguments will happen. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I will make more. What is it, Kieran? Money. Yeah, um, definitely. He shot himself in the foot because then the content that was being clipped mm. were the ones that were yeah. targeting or belittling women. Yeah, yeah. And then it is a question of how we consume content right now mm. through via short form content where we take something as is, we read a title of an article, we watch a short video, mm. we know it, we move on. We do not look into it. Yeah. So 13 year olds and 14 year olds, because yeah. that's where the platform is at right now. For him, but there's actually a lot of people my age like love him as well, like guys. Yes, like, yeah, like, because he is justifying your anger. Yeah. Which makes complete sense. Do- I what it's interesting though because I it really made me uncomfortable mm. to sit down and watch him talk about his sister, especially. Mm. And that's because I have a brother. Yeah. So for me, it was like yeah, if my brother like yeah. spoke about me like that. It's just crazy. I uh, like yeah. I don't know how I would have felt. It was hard for me to think that, and then like my mind went to the point of if my brother wasn't twenty three and would have been fourteen, yeah, would he have been? Would he have spoken about me like that? Yeah, I'm not saying again. It's not my brother as a person. It's more just like generically a brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's difficult. So. I do think that there had to be a little bit of a limitation 100%. on the content that was being told. Yeah. In saying that, though, I do think that right now social media platforms are looking at being a little bit too politically correct. Yeah. Where it's kind of like what we were saying, like there's a certain end of the spectrum, which is unfortunately a bit more conservative. The conservative voices are being toned down. And yeah, lib- not, not anymore even, though. Not anymore. They own Twitter now. <laughs> They're on Twitter now because <laughs> thanks it. to Elon Musk, yeah. a completely different story. Yeah. But the conservative voices are being toned down. Yeah. And then it's not even the liberal ones, but a more mm. sensitive one is being yeah. uh, okayed. Now, in saying that, I don't think that there should be any censorship, yeah. but I do think there should be a little bit more promotion. Mm on the happy middle yeah that's it and it's just teaching the skills of sit down and watch an interview or watch a 40 minute video that you completely disagree with yeah sit down and watch it be exposed to things that trigger you yeah and don't go fucking on a whole rant about it yeah that's it. Because I do think that I'm not saying that our generation is sensitive. Yeah, yeah. I do think our generation are so like a lot of social media platforms and uh there is quite a loud majority on both ends, yeah. loud minority on both ends that are paving the way for bullshit to yeah. happen and disagreements to happen and thus going nowhere. Definitely. I definitely, like, I agree with a lot of it. The problem is, and I only learned this because I was, like, totally, like, the whole, I was definitely, like, I definitely don't think, like, the idea of cancel culture is what people think it is. And I only, like, I am I literally listen to podcasts that are completely on the left and completely on the right. Like, I love it because I'm, like, I fall in the middle every you time. you fall in the middle every but time. But every single, like, cause or reaction, like, I'm never because... I never like fight for something. I never fight for anything because I think there's more important things to be talking about Fact. than most of that shit anyway. But like when the world is arguing over something, like I, it's never about, oh, what's this side on? I'm on it. It's about like what I actually just naturally feel. Mm. Definitely. So like, so I say that like I'm not on any side at all when I say this. Like yeah. I definitely don't think, like, I can ask you a question. Right? If you owned a, a social media platform, right? Mm. And 
so I do agree, right? There, there's times where people are like censoring, censoring stuff on the internet shouldn't be a thing. Except because, for when animals die. Yeah, but because censorship on the internet, as you said, people should ex- be exposed to these things because it's the real world and it's yeah. just on the screen. And But if you own a social media platform and that social media platform is being used as a place for just say... Like anything, just say, I won't even use a real example because like people always do this, like KKK or not. There's a, a different group, right? Yeah. Just a group that are using your social media platform to have meetings on the next time they're going to murder innocent people just because they're old and they don't like old people. Do you let them on your platform? And they are going to go and do something to these people. Do I let them on? So if, yeah. if, if you take them off the platform... They don't have a platform to arrange these meetings. There's the potential you're saving people's lives. Okay. Are you going to do that or do you let them on it? Yes. You let them on it. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I will get rid of them. Yeah. And I think that is where the lo- the rules yeah. of a social media platform should be written down. Def- yeah. And there should be no grace. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. Like there are companies that like are on a daily basis, twenty four seven, constantly trying to find like terrorist mm. videos, murder, yeah. anything that sort of stuff to remove it. Yeah. No one is complaining about that. That right. should be removed. Yeah, I think everyone on all sides yes. agrees, which is good. Exactly. And most obviously, there's yes. outliers. And there, there is outliers. There are those extremes. Yeah. Do I think that there is a new extreme where? people like 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 Andrew Tate right okay yeah he created a little bit of damage right yes he did what would have made more sense removing him from the platform and making more men angry or maybe go like explaining certain things more maybe pushing certain content more maybe going listen mate Andrew Tate didn't even have a TikTok account Mm -hmm. it was pure commission-based yeah. accounts. What about account identification? Yeah. Only Like, only your content is going up instead. Yeah. Hello? User 127 fucking 2. But does that not get into the realms of taking away free speech if people can't upload whatever? I think free speech is super important, but mm. you need to recognize yeah. the concept of accountability. Do you want to know something mad? Andrew Tate, give you an example. Like, he definitely didn't have a little effect. Like, and I, I, when I see him, like, I'm not someone, I can tell the times where he's doing jokes more, like, and he's like playing the entertainer. Mm. Like, I watch a lot of stuff because I'm interested because I'm a guy, right? And I see yeah. all these other guys. Why? What What do they, what do they see? Like, explain to me. I think I'm the only guy in the planet that could make Andrew Tate cry in a room okay. just because, <laughs> like, I think he he's, he's probably strong physically, but I think I actually know so well, I can tell by that man's, like, pain why he's, like, been through and shit. And relatable as well and relatable to every other guy. I, the problem is, is like, yeah, like I was saying, like I worked, like I've been through it, like I know what he's talking about and he vaguely says this shit he what was being through. What is he talking about? Just like going through like relationship stuff, like all that like stuff that comes across that's misogynistic to some people and, you know, some people obviously don't think it's misogynistic, but that stuff, that content particularly, obviously comes from a place of, and this is what other guys, this is why other guys are obsessed with him because they don't see it. They don't see that it's coming from a place of absolute like um, insecurity, like complete insecurity. And I, I'm not, I'm not one of those people saying, "Oh, he's insecure and weak" or anything like that. I'm saying it from a place of actual, like, compassion, like for another guy that felt hurt and wasn't able to deal with it because probably when he grew up, he wasn't taught how to deal with it. guys. Aren't because like guys just so guys aren't taught how to deal with. A girl breaking their heart, do you mean? Uh, yeah, well, like, obviously loads of stuff. I mean, do you know what is interesting as well? The thing I find funny, and, like, Andrew Tay is, like, a... He's a product of the other side's um, intense reaction or intense... So, like, even though I think, like... Like he had, he definitely had a big negative effect on the world and, and he... On, on st- uh, younger generations. I don't think older... I think people my age can... We just thought it was jokes. Younger people are taking it serious, like people in schools. I've seen it with my uh, yes, little cousin. Yes, because I cousin. never understand. A lot Crazy of people shit. say, like a lot of secure men yeah. that have spoken about Andrew Tate go, it's gas, he's taking the piss. Yeah, a lot, like a lot of them are. Like, he, a lot, the stuff is, he, he's he's been facetious. Like he's, he's, 
he's been ironic. Like he's been half. It's like making a joke out of something that he actually believes. He's he he's only exaggerating it. Like he doesn't obviously. I don't think he believe. Like I t- I think if he was in a room one on one with like a woman, he's actually probably a nice guy. I think the problem is the kids don't get the joke. So I do. So I'm not someone defending him at all. Like because I actually think his stuff is doing more harm than good. Like, I don't think kids get the joke at all. They definitely don't get the joke. Like, they, like that was what was happening with all the teachers in school. And I, when yes. you're saying, so this was stuff, right, that was all over Reddit. And the reason he got taken down is because uh, people were saying uh, on Reddit that all these kids were going into school in America being like, I'm not doing the work for the teacher because you're a woman. And that was happening in America. People were saying, oh, that's all perpetual. I literally seen it in my home estate. Like, in my home estate where I grew up, these young lads were saying mad shit. And I went up to them and one of them like related to me. Who were they me. saying mad shit to? Uh, they were talking about like saying mad shit about women, like just between okay. themselves. Okay. And I was walking by it. I literally experienced it and I actually stopped them up. And I was like, oh, why are you talking about like, because I would like always like talk to them just because like, I don't know, it's just because they like when someone's older is talked to, they just like get a buzz off it when people, mm-hmm. and I was like, lads, what are you talking about? And they were like, oh, start showing me all these Andrew Tate videos. This is in a small estate in Ireland in the middle of fucking Turles. So like to say he wasn't having an effect, like these young lads were saying crazy shit, like not jokes, like just weird shit. That And to be honest, I think they'll grow out of it as well. But like, what about the ones that don't? That's terrifying. Yes. That's fucked up. Like, like what about the ones that don't grow out of it and actually go around fucking like thinking they can abuse women and shit is weird. Like, and, Mm -hmm. and I really can say, I don't think that's his intentions. And that was, I don't think he knew the extent of like, so uh, I don't know. It's a weird thing, but bottom line, I think he's, I think, I think he's insecure. I I think in so many ways, he's not. What do you think he's insecure about though? Uh, like I think when, if you get, I think he, it sound from everything I researched, he was madly in love with people and he was someone like myself, who would love someone deeply if he was in a relationship with them, but then they broke up with him. He hadn't done enough like sort of spiritual self work on it to where um, he could be comfortable with that or figure it out or come to the conclusion and accept it to happen. So instead, what you have to do then is make sure it never happens again. How do you do that? You never fall in love with another woman. You, you objectify them so that you can't fall in love with them. And that's what happens. And that's what happens with a lot of these guys. Like they're usually those guys who end up objectifying women were once in love and once very, very lovely fucking guys who who were secure and strong. But then that heartbreak comes by the one that they thought was the one. And then they say, I'm never going through that again. So how did they do that is they objectify them. They cut it out. They, They don't, they try and not see them as in a way that they could end up loving them again. Because if they end up loving them again, they're going to be heartbroken again. And that happens so much with guys and I think that's why so many guys look up to him and I'm not saying he's fully insecure there's so many ways he's secure because yeah he has money and he's probably is happy in so many ways I'm not just saying he's sad and but like I'm saying the reason so many people look up to him is because they like resonate with that like they there's like they love hearing another guy saying like yeah fuck women like you know they're not you you don't need to fall in love with and like their property and all this shit it's because a guy can't have their heart broken by property. So of course, they're like all these insecure men are going to see women as property, like, and like, you know, and, and want to see it as that. Like, and I think that's obviously, you know, it's extremely fucked up, but, uh, I think it goes, I think then it's like, then what's the solution? Like, you know, there's no point in talking about problems. I think it's, and it making, making space for guys to be okay with talking about that shit with each other, especially because girls, when they break up with each other, like they can often have each other to talk to and be like, he fucking hurt me. And I feel hurt by it. Guys, I've only had like one or two guys come up to me saying another a girl hurt them, but I've had a load of like girls come up to me telling me that guys have hurt them, you know, in relationships. And, um, I think that's cause guys can't talk with it, can't talk about it with each other. And then, um, they bottled that up. There's stuff they're getting better at talking about with each other, other mental health and stuff, but there's something that stops guys talking about breakups. It's like, I think they see it as, because if a girl breaks up with them, that means they're shit at being a human. So they can't tell their friends that they're shit at being a human because th- like that's how they see it in, in their head. I've had that same experience before. Like that's what it feels like. So you don't want to... Bring the microphone to your... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to... Interrupt. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think genuinely that's where... 
a lot of it comes from. And I think, yeah, I think the solution though is, yeah, we provide more space. And the problem here, and this is what I mean when I say, so like, that's a very like one-sided, like I'm nearly like sound like against, you know, all. No, no, no. I think this is the first time I've heard that I'm actually understanding Mm. the male experience of a breakup and the male experience Mm. of understanding what yeah. is the trigger? What breaks the camels back in lads turning to someone like him? Yeah, yeah. And it makes complete sense. Yeah, because they can... Yeah. He's the first guy speaking about it without speaking about it. Like, everyone knows, like... I feel like he's the first guy that's going, like, you know how when it comes to women and it's like, oh, men ain't shit. Yeah. Fuck boys, e- blah, 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 yeah, blah. exactly. He is the first that's a fact. guy... That is a fact. ...to change the narrative and yeah. instead of saying, fuck boy, he's going yeah. property. Yeah. The problem, I do think, is just by stats, women will probably leave it at fuck. Like, if, we, if, a, if a woman says, fuck guys, I don't need guys... They'll probably leave it at that. Yeah. Whereas the problem is, is a lot of those guys won't leave it at that. Like mm-hmm. they will, like a lot of them who really are, like people always make that narrative that women are really like fucking emotional and shit. But like, man, like if you're emotional out loud, that I don't think like that. It's the problem is men are way more emotional and they keep it all in. And then they end up, then they think that they're not as emotional as women. And then they end up doing some crazy shit because it will come crazy. out. It fucking will come out. It, and, and it comes out bad for and people. And that's like where the in. stats are. It yeah. comes out bad in the suicide rates, for yeah, instance. Yeah, yeah. Because, and that was a very interesting discussion I had on men's mental health, where yeah. I actually asked, oh yeah, men's suicide is significantly more than women. Why is that? Yeah. And it was actually countered back to me where it's, Women try to commit suicide three times more than men. Mm. Men are more lethal. Yeah. Therefore, there is that stat for you. Therefore, yeah. you keep peeling the onion. That is why it should not be a competition. Yeah, 100%. Men's mental health and women's mental health should be spoken about equally. Mental together. health. Yeah. Together. Yeah. It is not that men suffer more. It is not that women suffer more. Yeah. No, 100%. It's just understanding the yeah. nature of things where, yes, I compl- no one can... If someone decides to argue with the fact that men are more lethal, no, it can't be. Mm. The suicide rates are there, but the attempts are there too. 100%, yeah. We are both struggling. Yeah. That is literally the final answer that yeah. we get. Yeah. Um, But uh, that was an interesting, like, leeway into it where I had a discussion with a trans man on this conversation, on Mm. this podcast, where I spoke to him about what was your experience like after you transitioned? Into a man, yeah. Into a man. You know what he said? Yeah. The moment that I experience anger, all I want to do is punch something. That's mad. That's so interesting. The Like... (laughs) <laughs> it's physically there. It is yeah. not toxic masculinity. Mm. It's not toxic masculinity. No, not yeah. obviously. Obviously, this is not a generic thing. Yeah. Because everyone is unique. But at the end of the day, mm. there is something natural yeah. in testosterone yeah. at a male dose yeah. that makes men more physical, makes men yeah. feel heightened when it comes to certain emotions such as anger, yeah, such as bro- feeling a broken heart and betrayal. Yeah. I, what I think, though, I definitely agree with that. Like, I, I like, fucking... I just have in mental anger, like, issues, and I would, like, blackout type of shit, like, and I was mad. Um, and I think, though, like... I think though, I think it just goes back to like that. Just that's, I think a lot of that comes out with like there's guys, and you know, I, I'm starting to get there. Like, I'm definitely more controlled in emotions, but I've met guys who are fucking who wouldn't, uh, who wouldn't spend a second even talking about Andrew Tate. Like, they wouldn't have even, like, just and usually they could be fucking probably in their 50s and they're like living in, in a forest or something. But these lads have found themselves and. I know for a fact, no matter what, there are men out there that no matter what happened to them, they would never punch a wall. That because yeah. that they know what they know about themselves and stuff. And I'm aiming to get to that. And I'm definitely not there. I'd still, if something got bad and getting better at it, and I want to get there. But like, I do know for a fact that, that it is that 
it's possible to be a man and not react like that. I think yeah. it goes back to the, the more I talk about this shit as a man out loud to other guys, to other girls, to anyone, the more I talk about my shit, the less I am. The, the, if you could look at like a, a timeline, the more punch and wall is the less I talked. The more I talk, the less punch and wall. It's actually as simple as that. I really think it's like, as you're saying, like, the, you know, girls... Uh, and this isn't even all true as well. Like, every, like there's obviously like loads of girls that punch walls and stuff. Yeah. But like, probably there are girls who who don't talk as much as well. You know, mm-hmm. there because I know and I know loads of girls and stuff that uh, find it hard to talk. And they're definitely the type of girls that would punch a wall. And and it does come back from that general feeling of hurt or yeah. embarrassment when you yeah. do try to talk. Yeah, that's a fact. Because. I think it always started off probably in childhood at the point in time where you tried to speak up about your feelings yeah, yeah. and someone humiliated you. Yeah. Whether it be a parent or a friend or a teacher, that is like yeah. unique. Some, uh, Unfortunately, it's probably everyone <laughs> Yeah. Um, or one person in each significant group or community. Yeah. Um. And it is a struggle when the people... <sighs> okay, so I obviously was not happy in Malta and I wasn't happy with my circumstances yeah. in Malta. So when I moved to Ireland, I had to create a new life for myself. Okay. And it obviously took time in order to find the friends and all that. Yeah, And that also goes back to like a little bit of empathy towards people where they have to find the right people. And unfortunately they have to work in finding the right people and the right yeah. circle of friends in order to talk to someone. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there is a little bit of an element of not embracing discomfort enough because the way people talk about embracing discomfort is mm. wake up at 5 a.m. Go on a run, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. going to be hard. Yeah. Go ghost and then in three months they're going to come, like your DMs are going to be flooded versus <laughs> yeah. your housemate is actually shit. Yeah. And although your rent is really good and you're comfortable yeah. right now, you should look into changing mm. and finding a new place. 100%. Yeah. That's it. That is probably the discomfort that you need, yeah. You know, to fu- to get to that step closer, yeah. To figuring out your circle, yeah, yeah. Because it, I wasn't, I wasn't happy where I was. You know, like I remember three years ago having that discussion with my parents, being like. I didn't like the school I was at, and I told you from primary, yeah. And you didn't change that. Yeah. And they looked me in the eyes and go, and at the age of 21 going like, yeah, you're right. Sorry. You know, my bad. But that was how long for 12 years of my life, 11 years of my life Mm. where I had no one, Mm. but that is context. That was out of my control. But a lot of people are in that situation where you can't, if you're in a school that you hate, Mm -hmm. And there's no one that you like. There is only so much you can do about that. The moment that you can seek discomfort in such a way where you fucking get out of your hometown, get out of that school, get out of the circle of friends that Mm -hmm. are toxic towards you. Yes, all you know is these ones that have probably changed nappies with you from the age of two. Yeah. But you, you need to discover that area of yourself where then... Yeah. The moment that you talk... It's landing on ears that are welcoming it versus telling you to cop on. Mind you, you need someone to tell you to cop on. Definitely, yeah. But it depends on what. Do you do you have? I'm just thinking, like, I like to just say, like, do you do you have? Uh, yeah, like you were saying, like people ears that were like, where they like listen. Do you have like some like you don't say who right? Like, do you ever have like? Did you have a moment like where you were like? Holy shit! Like, were you, like this part where you felt like for the first time someone heard you, like, mm. that, like was there a first time yes. you felt that? Yes, for sure. I think, I think it came with time because I was always mm. a very good listener. There, I say, yeah. But then whenever I shared it, the reaction was bad towards me. 
Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. struggled a lot with that. And for a long period of time, I thought that I was the outcast. Yeah. And I was the problem. Yeah. Right? You know, I think it comes to a point where the moment that you stand up for yourself yeah. and the person greets that nearly and welcomes you standing up yeah. for yourself, then you go, huh. Yeah. This person is, I'm going to stick around. Like, they're welcome here. Yeah. Yeah. And standing up for yourself is different. It's not extreme, but it's literally going like, Kieran, I didn't like that joke you made. Yeah. Or not even that, that confrontational. It is literally just going about um, of just having a conversation where you have a perspective and I just go, listen, yes, but what about this, you know? Yeah. And then you go, huh, you know, all right. Yeah. Uh, like this one's all right, you know, yeah. this one's good. Th this one accepts, this one didn't humiliate me for having this discussion. This yeah. one accepted me 100%. and presented something new. It's so important. Like, like it's like, yeah, resistance causes resistance. Like the more mm. you push at something, the more it pushes back. If you want to actually get change, like, and that's like the thing then if people like, like controversial characters and like the reaction to someone like Andrew Tay or like just someone else on the left who's controversial whatever like yeah. people's reactions are always like I'm gonna tell this person like and it's fair enough because like they're reacting out their anger because they might be personally affected by it something similar but like get into that the real importance of like finding like one of the valuable things I found in like um if you can get to a stage where you're comfortable in yourself and you know yourself you get to be able to speak to people in a way and not react from emotions. So now most time still not there at it fully yet, but most of the time now when someone says something that I completely disagree with, my mind doesn't go, I'm going to like kind of force this person, not force, but I'm going to, because it feels like that to them because you're reacting out of emotion. So it's like, rah, like that. I'm going to tell you the exact opposite to what you're saying. It doesn't work. So like, one of the benefits of being able to be comfortable in your own emotions is if you if you do then you and someone saying something you disagree with like the goal is not to fight the goal should always be to like get them to understand and and for you to understand as well what they're saying so like um yeah i, I think it's like more important if you can be in a, a relaxed emotional state you can actually just gently be like i, I and i always say that as well like and i don't and it's not fake but i always say to them like I, I do know where you're coming from and I and I say that and I mean it. Like I actually feel what they're saying. I don't care if it's the most fucked up shit in the world. I will try and understand where they're coming from. And then I'll go, okay, now like, can I show you where I'm coming from? And if exactly. you do that, it's not like I'm going to force you to look at it. It's like try and show them where you're coming from. And like most of the time people will actually go, yeah, I agree with that. Because most of the time, if we could all just sit down and have a conversation without any emotions, the whole world, there literally would be no war. But it's like... It's everyone has a personal emotional reaction to most things, and which is understandable too, because it's like yeah, it's 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 always personal. Because yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I I think getting to a stage where you can not react emotionally can actually make change. Or and that's the same with both sides. It's all nonsense. Like I always get caught in the trap of like the whole left and right and like all this shit that's complete yeah. noise. Because like deep down in my soul, sometimes I get caught in it when I'm, you know not balanced that day and I'm like find myself too far on one side and I go what then I go and I go to sleep and go like wait the world yeah like shit like the earth's four billion years old there was fucking dinosaurs that were like literally a rock flying through space like we could have been here through thousands of lives I don't know like why like am I picking a side like it's like it's mm -hmm. madness like on the grand scheme of it whether you believe that in karma that we all come back here or you believe we are just on a rock floating through space one thing is for sure when you really dive into like the actual moment of reality either side is not it's so irrelevant to anything like it's so not what it is to be human it's weird like it's it's just lost and, it, and it's distorted like and i don't know and people always argue like oh people in the middle are only doing that one of my favorite quotes is Matthew mcconaughey he said he was in the middle and he he's from texas like and his friend said to him oh well uh Matthew, he, he was like to Matthew McConaughey. His friend was like, "Hey, the only thing that's in the middle of the road is like dead, is roadkill and dead possums." And Matthew McConaughey replied, "Really?" He said, 
everyone's so, f he said, for me, there's no one on the road. He said, everyone's so far on the left or right, they're not even driving on the road anymore. It's just me on the road. I was like, that's class. Like, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Like, like be everyone should be on the road. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like fucking one side. They're so far yeah. off the road. No yeah. one's on the road anymore. Like, my it's dangerous. My favorite piece of content of yours was when you go, okay, guys, we're going to have this meditation to like... Wait, what was uh, <laughs> yeah, you go like oh, it was on your stories. You go like, okay, oh, we're gonna yeah. have a little breathing <laughs> exercise, okay, to get rid of all this negativity. <laughs> and you go, I'm breathing, and breathe out. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was like, and tell everyone to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when I saw that, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, only, the reason I do that is because like the re mainly the, a big part of that is kind of like it's kind of a reminder to like I think a lot of people like a lot of like friends and stuff people like not even just friends like but people be interacting on Instagram like be very spiritual and they kind of I think it's like it's kind of more like to remind that community like it's just we, we crack as well like I don't know <laughs> I sometimes people take, yeah it's funny people take themselves too seriously and yeah. then you pop off going looking like a pure hippie and then just like breathe in and then yeah. just telling everyone to fuck right <laughs> off on to the next. Yeah. <laughs> it's gas. It's but uh, in saying that, the one struggle that I have had yeah. and I still haven't figured out is does being in the middle and not standing for anything. Yeah. Is that a little bit of like a hypocrisy, mm. right? But sometimes what i then toy with the idea is maybe that is yeah the thing that i stand for yeah does well, it uh, like like niching down yeah it's a good tactic yeah it's a very good tactic and who who said you have to stand like wh who, yeah who said you have to stand whoever stood <laughs> like got <laughs> killed yeah like, yeah uh, i can't oh, oh people you can't stand yeah. The we'll people that can it. stand are people that I can't stand, like that we can't stand. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah, yeah. Both. Technically, yeah. with cancel culture, it is like actually not standing anyone. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like when it comes to just going back to history, just the element of profits, for instance, yeah. or standing with something. Right now, currently, we've got iran where we've got fourteen thousand people protesters that stood mm. for something facing the death penalty that is i think that would be a little bit too embarrassing towards mm. them to even call that cancel culture but you are technically cancelling out a voice entirely you know yeah and I think they found out though that that was that, which is an interesting thing. Tell me. That's like is completely that bullshit? not true at all. Which is really interesting because this is the first what time. Can help me. But this is the first time everyone on the left, I just like getting sucking sides, but what I, so I found it was interesting. First time they were sharing something which was wrong, which I think is important, even though left and right, it's important in the world right now, the grand scheme of things. Oh. Everyone, it doesn't matter. You're better off sitting down, standing up for silly things. Stand up for um, not what you believe in, but just stand up for each other. I don't know. There's, there shouldn't be anything more complicated. Anyway, um, yeah. but yeah, it's the first time, like, because when people like on the one side, on the right, were sharing all this stuff and everyone's like, that's misinformation. You're a fucking idiot. You should be embarrassed. So like, it's kind of important to balance the scale that now everyone on the left side was kind of sharing the the protest thing and it was like that turned out to not be true at all like what, what's uh, not true there's no one going to be murdered over there's no so and like I, I read that they were facing the death yeah penalty. is that bullshit yeah it's completely not true like and, sake. uh but why isn't and this is what i thought was interesting there is like the people uh on both sides were kind of on the far left right Do you know people are actually like looking at politics every day so people yes. who would have an idea like so on both left and right they were kind of like saying that this isn't true and the reason it's a bad thing to be sharing it, it's like you can't just wipe this off at like... Oh, xenophobia? Yeah, but no, because it's not even that. It's because they're actually, they are actually still doing bad shit. That the government are still arresting people for protests and that's wrong. If you say that they're murdering people too, now, now people go, okay, then they're not... Now because that's not true, what's after happening, now the world doesn't care that they're in jail anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, because okay. Never thought so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so like, right, they got locked up for shit they shouldn't have got locked up for. Fuck, really yes. shouldn't have got locked up. But now that's bad alone. And it should be that. Now we fight for that. But because now the whole world thought they were going to get killed, 
then when you remove the fact that they're not going to be killed anymore, people go, oh, it's okay, so. But no, it's mm. not okay because they're still in jail. Would you agree that the media is probably the greatest weapon right now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the greatest weapon is, I think it's the second greatest weapon. I think the greatest weapon is the most underused weapon, which is definitely the heart. I think someone... I think the person. I think you, the person with the, the same with fighting, like whether it's like fighting for your life or whether it's fighting in a ring. It's the person with the heart wins, and I think the people, I think the people with the biggest hearts aren't engaging in the fight. I think for they sure. don't need to fight. But but why are they, need they to get, not? Why are they not engaging? Uh, in the fight? Some of them are trapped in the peace and love thing too much, where they're misunderstanding it, and then some of them are really like fucking so enlightened that they know that none of it means it and, and maybe like and I think some of them then are afraid to because often the people with the good hearts and the people who would make good presidents and change makers are too humble and they go like no like they are, they're often that yeah, is yeah. true like they don't want to uh, be yeah. in a place like that I, I agree with that I actually had uh, I interviewed the politician and I went doesn't being a politician mean that you have to engage with corruption yeah Oh, One way or another, you do. Yeah. It, probably yeah. even at the local council level, unfortunately, yeah. business, whatever it may be, you have to engage with corruption and uh, you get tainted in some way or another. And that's yeah. why that's I, I do think that we are missing out a lot of on a lot of potential. Hmm. The I think probably one of my greatest fears is miss like missing out on potential on probably like my potential and other other yeah, people's yeah. i like th that's probably one of the things that's like i struggle to really yeah what is it like like the fear that you don't do what you could have done like. uh yeah like i'm not uh, functioning at mm. an optimal level and then i go about and that's what i'm currently working on mm. where i I have to work to pay my bills work takes up too much of my time i yeah. want to be doing other stuff yeah yeah is it out? Is it in my control? Yes, to a certain extent, I could say fuck to everything, move out, yeah, and maybe work on my own stuff. Yeah, I struggle with that though. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, um, that's Def where like the missed out potential is. Yeah, does that make sense? No, it, it definitely does. Um, in saying that, though, I think probably at a decision making level when it comes yeah. to communities and stuff, for sure, we are missing out on probably a lot of things, not just politically. Yeah, I would say scientifically, teachers, yeah, yeah. um, anyone who is not anyone, but a lot of people who, for instance, are really good at sciences, yeah. go, yeah, I'm going to be a doctor. Mm. Versus they might not be a really good doctor with their bedside table manners, but they might be a really good nurse. They might be a really good like lab scientist and yeah. st instead. But the career that is conveniently presented to them is becoming a doctor. Yeah, definitely. Or a lawyer or an engineer. You could be a really good carpenter. Yeah, but you're not, or a really good artist. Yeah. Um. So I do think that we are missing out on a lot of potential yeah. at a massive scale on yeah. a daily basis, nearly. Definitely, yeah. With everyone as well. Like, that's why, like, literally every person, like, it's crazy just, like, yeah, like, every, I know it's, like, generic, that like, everyone could do anything, but, like, that's so bizarre and true, like, um... Like I don't know, it get, obviously it gets into realms like of you 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 have more of an advantage as long as you have arms and legs. I think like yes. obviously that's like you know just so many things and it's like sports and stuff where that changes. And there are, like there obviously is outliers, but for the majority of the population, they could be uh, Mike Tyson, Usain Bolt. They could be the president of any country, you know, whatever country they're living in, they could, for the majority of people, like 99.9% .9 of the population, they have the equal uh, position who they are currently because all that means is as long as, like, you have, like, the same functions as the general population, uh, like, the only thing then stopping you from getting into that position is 100% yourself and your own... um and how you see yourself like is because 
most people could like start to do it and then they start getting like imposter syndrome and stuff like that and they'll they run away from it. I find myself like like in some weird position sometime where I go like why are people giving me this like responsibility and I'm so confused and and then for a while I thought like people like didn't I was seeing it as like people didn't believe in me and shit and it was like this weird realization when I like came to like what the fuck was I even on about because everyone was believing in me I was like getting like I, that's why they gave me the job that's why they let me do this that's why they helped me with that like it was like literally just me being like not accepting that people believe it, like then it's like you literally believing in yourself like and like, definitely not fully there like still parts of like me like when I'm thinking about things or planning things just see myself as like a kid that grew up in like a rough council estate and you know who never felt like that they were going to be the best or do anything and it's like that's that's a weird thing that it actually still stops me from even being confident talking in the shop because like when I was younger I wasn't confident so it's like on one hand, one hand, I like being confident because I know I can make the person behind the counter have a better day. But the other hand, then a part of me, if I'm not feeling good, will go, yeah, but you're, aren't you not that shy kid from when you were younger? It's like, who do you think you are? Like, you know, trying to make someone laugh. Who do you think you are trying to make someone feel good? It's like, you don't talk, you know, it's like that thing happens when you're having a bad day. And it's just about spending more time in the positive. Like the analogy is always, um, if you have... The white wolf that means good and is here to protect and if you have the so, the black wolf who's here to attack will feed the white wolf don't feed yeah. the black wolf and your problem will go away like and yeah i definitely have seen that in my life a lot like um it's like it's always simple stuff as well it's not like about like being the best at anything or doing it. it's literally just about functioning in life like yeah. feeding the white wolf is just about being happy in your day-to-day -day, like um life mm -hmm. and shit so the metaphor for people that are listening and never heard of this metaphor before it is the concept of having the good wolf and the bad bad wolf yeah. and a granddaughter or a yeah. daughter asking her dad or granddad about um, feeling upset or something like that. And the way the fable goes is being scared of the bad wolf and the good wolf within you. Yeah. But the wise man, the granddad or the father going, you should fear the wolf that you feed. Mm. So... <clears throat> why is it that whenever I narrate something, I my voice breaks? Yeah. Every time. That's really? something that you, uh, puberty. You're going through puberty right now, live on the podcast. At the age of 25. <laughs> Watch you here. The first time someone going through puberty was captured. When, whenever, live. Kieran, I promise you, whenever I narrate something, if I am yeah, if, yeah, if someone right. released a book and I am reading a passage from their fucking book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're doing like this speech to get you into the presence. Yeah, I am not meant for speeches. <laughs> really? No, no, no. Um, no, you're doing good. You I'm good. doing good. You're but doing the way it goes is um, the good wolf and the bad wolf. Yeah. And if you fear which one is going to win, yeah. what you could find comfort in is that it is the one you feed. Yeah. So if you were yeah. to feed the bad wolf, if you are feeding negative feelings such as jealousy, which yeah. are all natural, by the way, in jealousy, anger, negativity, pity. For instance, you are feeding the bad wolf, so you are going down a certain, a specific wolf is yeah. winning you over versus the good one, um, which I completely believe in. I yeah, think that was definitely. probably one of my like metaphors that I really um, used yeah. in my first year of like moving to Ireland, like being really? alone. Yeah. And all, oh, completely. All the time. All the time. It was such yeah. a struggle in fairness. Um, what is it I want to ask you about like this kind of stuff I completely forgot also that is seven percent that little thing mm, nice Fuck that's it. mad wow, why are so <laughs> many beers getting like, so mad <laughs> like if anyone is like are you going to ask me what's like to go through puberty uh, should you be you scared know, please don't tell me <laughs> <laughs> like do wet dreams happen, happen often for lads like growing up for, for me like all I know is that like my fr the way my friend described it to me is look you're sleeping and then at the point in time you need to go have a shower in the middle of the night. <laughs> wait what? That's mad. <laughs> what? <laughs> never, no, really? I, no wait what? Oh wait after. Wait, oh sorry wait. I get you now. Yeah yeah yeah. So he yeah okay right. I okay never mind. Doesn't matter what I taught Tell you. Me. <laughs> I was like what the fuck's yeah anyway um no I don't know I 
Uh, I still. So we're not going to talk about wet dreams. I, 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 I <laughs> am weird. Like I've definitely gone through puberty. I think I don't know, but I, I, I still do because I don't masturbate, and if you don't, the body will uh, let it out itself. Like, is there know. a reason why you don't? Uh, it's tra- I don't know. Just, yeah, because it. I feel like it drains a lot of my energy. Ooh. Yes. Explain. I, uh, <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it just, um, I'm not someone that thinks like, it's because, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think it is like, I'm not, oh, I don't know how to explain it because I don't want to sound like, because a lot of one of those guys who are like fucking extreme in that stoicism shit, like I was on about this shit, but they're like, they're doing it, in, I don't know, in a, in a different way. Like I, I definitely, it's not true for everyone, but for me, uh, I definitely feel more, creative and i do actually see why it's regarded as like life force not it, it's it's like i can see why sexual energy and creative energy are connected and being balanced um is like for me when uh yeah when when i don't and i'm alert i don't know how to explain it it's a weird thing it's like it, it's i'm more creative mm. it sounds mad but like i'd like more creative like, like you like channel this elsewhere yeah yeah exactly like it's it's an intense energy like it like anyone for guys and girls when they orgasm it's a it's an explosion like and girls and guys guys can have orgasms without like ejaculating and can have similar experience to girls but guys aren't taught any of this and it's really like kind of like sort of uh Wait, I did not know this. Yeah. Fun fact. Obviously, yeah. I'm a lesbian as well, so obviously I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Either. I don't think most, no, <laughs> like, like, no guys know this. Like, I, no, no, like. Explain to me, what do I, you mean? Like, you can, like, guys can orgasm, like, girl, guys can have multiple orgasms, uh, similar to the feeling that guys would normally have it, but can do it without, um, and have a prolonged experience like a female and a shared experience even with a female in a different sensation, but, uh, they, they, it, that's where the monkey ape thing comes into it. Like not monkey ape, but like that very like primal, like you're just going to stay doing it until it builds up and then the explosion and then they're depleted. So the reason why a guy feels so tired and their energy is drained after it yeah. is because it's an evolutionary thing that back is that, that they would stay there, uh, to protect the, the woman, uh, and lie with her that night. So they, they, that's why, like, the whole classic thing, like, guys fall asleep after. It's actually a really old evolutionary thing. So I think that our bodies, this is my opinion, that our bodies are only designed to... Uh, and this isn't, like, saying you should only do this. That's what I mean. I don't want to be one of those store fucking nonsense things. <laughs> I I just think, like, um, yeah, that, that, that there's... The evolutionary guys only did ever ejaculate when they were having kids to reproduce and it was like an evolutionary thing as a as a mammal like and a more animalistic thing to to lie there and fall asleep and to protect and be there with the woman and shit like that and yeah because you're you're building up all this energy that creates life Mm. and it's like you're like what comes out of that like in reproducing is a whole fucking kid that's mad. Like that's a whole universe that you're building. So obviously that's going to take a lot of energy. So if instead you don't use that energy, like, well, if, if, if my semen could create a whole kid, like keeping that maybe inside might may, 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 maybe help me with my art school project <laughs> or, or, or something bigger, like a festival. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I definitely anyway, personally do feel like, um, it gives me energy when I don't. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I no, <laughs> I love that. I love how the way you ended it was, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, baby number what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could be a festival. <laughs> yeah, do you want to have a baby or a festival? <laughs> you too. Yeah, one could one could um get you in lots of trouble. One could get you in legal trouble. The other could get could uh take up your time. If if you <laughs> could try your hardest, yeah, to. Like, if you end up accidentally impregnating someone, right? Okay. Could you please name them after the festival you had planned? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's my- just, just for the crack. <laughs> just like you could have been a baby or a festival. Oh, you know? so you're saying what? You could have called the child. Yeah. So you have to name the festival, like, Either Ronald's. name the festival, Like Ronald, I would call my child, Or Ronald. name the child, yeah. body and soul. Oh, swap them around. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a good idea. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Just be like, be thankful. <laughs> yeah. Be grateful you're here rather than. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could have. That's what I'll say to him when I'm angry. When I when my kid's like pissing me off and he's like you six. Could've been a you you could you could have been a festival. <laughs> you could have been a. But no, you're a kid. How dare you? <laughs> you yeah. could have been an event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Guess. Yeah. I I think we're done. Yeah. That was a long. <laughs> <laughs> I think stage, we definitely. can keep going. No, that's that's. I forgot yeah. we're literally recording. I think we're yeah. done. Would you? How long did you normally do them? Uh, as long? long as I feel like it. Yeah. In fairness. Was that? And would there? Would you ever done any that long before? I didn't even know how long. It was. I have no idea. Was it? Have you done him that long before? I've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can mad. talk for ages. Fair okay. play. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, thank you, Kieran, yeah. for joining. Kieran. <laughs> Kieran, Kieran, thank Thomas, you, Kieran. Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, for joining me. Yeah. Ben, <laughs> yeah. Oshin. Yeah. <laughs> what? That's bad. All the names, and thank you, everyone, for listening. I appreciate it. Yeah. Ciao. Bye. Bye.